Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcasting. God bless you. God bless your families. Please tell me if my sound is loud and clear. <clears throat> Hi everybody. Welcome admins. Welcome my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for the confirmation. Hello Phil Herrera, Longius of Jerusalem, Carolina, Peter DeWall, Kevin Allen, The Green Nature, TM Crosspulse, Ian Randall, Hafsa Idasi, our dear sister who was an ex, sorry, a Muslim, became an ex-Muslim, is now a Christian, a sister, a dear sister in Christ. Welcome. We have uh, a Muslim, the destroyer, who is crying in the live chat. Um, I think he's still crying. It's the same Ali Mirza that I really spanked in a, in a live debate. So, of course, he's going to cry and, st and still say, hey, Rob Christian, why are you not doing something else? Well, this is my uh, mission, my friend. Uh, and if you don't like it, no one forces the sword of Muhammad on your neck to stay and watch. So, if you don't want to watch, leave, man. Why are you still here? Uh, prophet, someone is calling himself the Prophet. Dean, Enigma, Son of God, Dice TV, welcome. Sorry if I missed or did not mention your name, Jason Palmer. If I didn't mention your name, please forgive me. Nice to have you here. Please don't forget to invite your friends. I love you all, including the Muslims. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your donations. God bless you, God bless your families. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas, guys, and the celebration of the new year with your loved ones and families and friends. All right? We have another Muslim, Battle Slayer. Welcome, Battle Slayer. You're the one who called me uh, two times. Nice to be here. You know, guys, uh, like we always say, we actually don't uh, hate Muslims, you know? Muslims uh, are forced to hate what Allah hates, right? They are forced to hate what Allah hates. But we in Christianity, we don't hate. We are actually commanded to even love our enemies, right? So this is what the beautiful Christian teaching, the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is teaching us and commanding us to do. Love and forgive what is more powerful than that? Guys, before we start our today's teaching and topic, the Muslim common objections against the deity of Christ, please let us pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will be guided through our live show. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Bless them. Bless their families, their loved ones. Lord, thank you for your grace and thank you for the amazing last year, 2019. Thank you, Lord, for my lovely audience, supporters and subscribers who kept supporting me day in, day out for the last year. Please, Lord, bless them and their families. God, keep all of us healthy and safe in 2020. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, taqiyya, lies or any doubt please lord help us honor you in all our ways lord fill me with your holy spirit and loosen my tongue today so i can teach and speak the truth without any error or any shame lord please give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done today in jesus name we pray amen amen Again, for the people who just joined in, welcome, God bless you, God bless your families, thank you for your support, thank you for joining our live stream. 
On this live broadcast, as we mentioned earlier, we have the opportunity today to investigate the Muslim objections against the deity of Christ. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. So if you have any questions in the live chat, please hold your horses and write your questions down so we will not forget, the, uh, forget them. And please ask your question again in the live chat when I'm done teaching, because I cannot teach and answer questions and pay attention to the live chat all the time. We have admins who can deal with a lot of stuff, okay? So if there are Muslims, only Muslims, if there are Muslims, you can call us live on Skype. I will open up my Skype now and you can call me and try to refute me. So only the Muslims can call us for now. Let's see if we will allow also Christians to call us in the uh, end of our teaching. Okay, guys? Uh, and there's always a Muslim uh, who always call me when I'm not live. What's the deal, man? Is there something wrong with you? I mean, really? Why are you calling me when I'm not live? What's the point? <laughs> so if you if you are a Muslim, you can't wait. Just wait a couple seconds. Before. Uh, let me first go live and then call me. What, where's the wisdom in calling me when I'm not live? Anyway, anyway, let it go. So guys, that's the topic of today. Investigating the Muslim objections against the deity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I think this is a very important topic because you need to understand and teach yourself how to deal with common questions and objections from Muslims, you know, and only the truth and only the truth will prevail, people. Let us start today's <clears throat> live show. Before we do that, since it's actually the deity claim of Jesus against the lies of Muhammad, the fake prophet of Islam, the self-proclaimed Prophet of Islam, let me say the following. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Are you ready? People, I said again, are you ready? <laughs> it never gets old. I love, I love Michael Buffer. I mean, I've been a fan for a long time, so deal, uh, bear with me, guys. Deal with it. <laughs> are you ready? We are ready, says Jason Palmer. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, welcome, guys. God bless you. Let us actually start our live show. There was a guy that I was talking to, guys, uh, on YouTube in the comment section. And this guy that I was talking to, his name is Black, Black Frost, who claims to be a Christian. As you see, Black Forest, Frost. And I told him I'm going to address one of couple of his questions that he has issues with and let me scroll back a little uh, he says black frost it happened five hours ago he says this one question I always seem to struggle with you know I really guys we are also for the people who are struggling with questions especially if you claim to be a Christian uh, you seem that this guy to be honest with you read his text you will see that he, this guy cl clearly uh, did not read the Bible correctly to understand it. Uh, there are a lot of Christians who claim to be Christians, but they have no time, clearly, they have no time to read the Bible to 
address their own questions. I mean, if I have a question and I'm a sincere uh, Christian who is looking for the truth, I'm going to read the Bible to see if my question is going to be answered. And you have something called the internet. You can look the questions up and I'm sure Google will provide many answers for your questions from the Holy Bible. So his question is, and I quote, quote unquote, Black Frost is saying, quote unquote, this one question I've always been to struggle with. How would God allow a large group of people to fall into deception and be deceived? This somewhat thinking like an atheist, a Christian will claim Muslims have been deceived and vice versa, a Muslim will claim Christians have been deceived. Now, my friend, my friend, there's something called free will. In Christianity, we Christians understood that there is something called free will. There's something called free will. So God gave us the free will to choose either to listen to his commandments, right, to his rules, or go against him. So we have a free will, right? Even the angels, according to the Bible, have free will, right? Because Satan was an angel and he chose to go against God. Adam and Eve had the free will and Eve, when she ate from the forbidden tree, she chose because she had the free will given by God. It was a gift from God to have a free will and she chose to go against the commandment of God. Don't eat from that forbidden tree, right? So when we, mankind, chose to go against God, we caused ourselves to be deceived by Satan. So, you know, these are the basic things. If you claim to be a Christian, Black Frog, and I hope you're watching, I hope you're watching because I promised you I'm going to address your questions. So if you claim to be a Christian, these are basic teaching of Christianity. God gave us a free will and we are the ones to choose to go against God or stay with God. And if we choose to go against God, of course you're going to be, you know, deceived. Because you are choosing to go against God and you are falling for the deception, de uh, deception of Satan, right? Right? So these are basic questions. You know, I, you know it, it's devastating to even, you know, ask this kind of questions as a Christian. So it, it, it really shows us what kind of uh, knowledge you have about Christianity, Mr. Black Frost. So I addressed in the comment section, you know, it's really hard for me to address questions in text. So, you know, I, you know, I thought, hey, let me address this also live because maybe a lot of Christians are, are having troubles with these kind of questions, right? So I told him, because of God of the Holy Bible is not Allah in Islam. Allah, not father to mankind, is nothing but a master and Muslims, his slaves, as the only relationship without any free will at all, right? In Islam, there's no free will, right? If you go to the hadith, guys, if you go to the hadith where Muhammad is talking, and I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Sahih Muslim, right? Sahih hadith, Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad is saying, if you don't sin in Islam, you don't sin, Allah will remove you from existence and replace you by sinners. So Allah wants you to commit sin. Where's the free will? I mean, where's the free will in Islam if Allah will remove you if you don't sin? Right, guys? Doesn't make sense. So there's no free will in Islam at all because Allah, if you're going to not sin, if you're be going, going to be righteous and not sin at all, Allah will take you out and he will remove you from existence and replace you with a true sinner because Allah likes Muslims to sin i.e. Allah is Satan, exactly Hafza, correct, you got the point. So the, the only relationship of Allah with Muslims is a master with his slaves, i.e. the Muslims, right? So where's the free will? There is no free will in Islam. So this proves how Islam is not Abrahamic at all, because the Abrahamic religions actually do teach that there is something called free will, and this proves that Islam is not an Abrahamic 
faith. And Allah himself is not father to mankind, right? And we're going to go deeper in that in a couple of moments. So Allah is not a father, but our God, our holy living God of the Holy Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is father to mankind. So again, another proof, evidence that Allah and God of the Bible are not the same God and Islam is truly not an Abrahamic faith as the Muslims claim. Because if you claim that Islam is an Abrahamic faith, that means you have to agree with the Holy Bible that teaches that God is father to mankind. But Allah over and over in the Quran, and we're going to provide evidence from Quranic ayahs that Allah is father to no one. So this proves, I showed you two proofs that Allah cannot be God of the Holy Bible and Islam is not an Abrahamic faith. And as you see, I continue, our God of the Bible gave us free will. In Islam, there is no free will at all. So when I look at your above question, I completely understand why a Muslim is confused and needs to ask such a question like you. But God of the Bible is our father who gave us free will to choose to go against him or not. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim that confirm that there is no free will in Islam because if you choose to not sin as slave of Allah, i.e. sin, i.e. go against Allah by having free will, Allah will remove you out of existence and replace you with another sinner, as I mentioned earlier. So Allah loves Muslims to keep sinning. This is why God of the Bible is not Allah of the Quran. So I understand your confusion. Please leave this cult and come back home to Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, at that moment, I didn't know that this guy claims that he is a Christian, right? I didn't know that. So I was addressing him as a Muslim. And then he answers. He says, quote unquote, Black Frost, I am a Christian, actually. I'm not Muslim. I'm using my free will. Well, so he agrees, basically, that there's no free will in Islam, but there's free will in Christianity. And this guy claims to be a Christian. There is things within Christianity, he continues, that are equally questionable. Question mark. No, there are not. But it seems that you are actually a little bit ignorant about Christianity, else you are, you are not going to uh, <laughs> address or mention the questions underneath. And you'll see why, guys, this guy truly claims to be a Christian, but he has no clue, much clue about Christianity, unfortunately. And that do not make sense, no point lying about it. <laughs> Let me say, ha, ha, ha. It's easy to point everything on Muslims and blame them for everything, but we are not blaming Muslims, my friend. We are not blaming Muslims. Actually, I, we pity Muslims for being victims of this man-made cult called Islam. The sex man-made cult of Muhammad. They are actually victims. We don't blame them. I mean, if you are born in a Muslim family, you know, and you've been listening to the Imams and your parents, it's not, we don't blame you for falling for the, for the trap. Islam is a trap of the devil himself. And we're not blaming Muslims. We're actually trying to help Muslims because we pity Muslims. This is why we do live shows to show them the truth and only the truth will set you free, right? In the end, only the truth matters. You can be very rich. Right? You can be very powerful as a man on this planet, but you will die in your sins if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible is clear about it. Right? And blah, blah, blah. And then it comes with his, he comes with his questions that he has trouble, troubles with. The emotional blackmail, he says. And you, are, you claim to be a Christian, right, right. You will only go to heaven if you worship God and if you say you don't believe anymore. Deny God, you will never be led back in faith again. Love me or else. Well, God is the, your creator. God is the one who is responsible for giving you life. I mean, if I'm your creator, if I'm your creator and I'm calling myself God and you want to be alive, you want to be forgiven, of course you need to accept God as your Lord, as your God. He is the one who created you, my friend. He owns you. He's the master. So what's the, what's the issue with that? 
I mean, then why are you a Christian in the first place? I really hope that you will stay a Christian. Don't get me wrong. But what's, why, why don't you understand that if someone created you, he owns you, he owns the world, he owns everything, he can also decide to put you in hellfire if you don't accept him. I don't see the issue with that. That makes perfect sense if you believe that there is something called God in the first place. And then point number two, how could a merciful God allow such suffering in the world? And don't give me free will, we are talking about God's responsibility for what he created. My friend, again you are showing us, look at this, look at this comment guys. You are showing us your ignorance about the free will actually. Yes, this has to do everything with free will. Again, again for the people who are suffering from the same issues. If you claim to be a Christian and you're always asking yourself, where are there so much pain, suffering in the world? Well, free will, sin that enters the flesh, sin that enters mankind, is because of that. The sin entering the flesh is the cause, is the re and the reaction is death, pain, misery, disease, all kind of stuff that we have to deal with every day day, day in, day out, because of our choice to go against God. It's sin that entered mankind that is responsible for this. God is not responsible for this. God is not responsible at all for us choosing to go against God. It's the free will. He gave us the free will. If you want to follow God, nothing will happen to you. But when mankind chose, i.e. Adam and Eve, they chose because they have the free will to go against God and sin entered mankind from that moment on. Of course, sin is the main cause of us suffering day in, day out, right? We chose to go against God. We chose to eat from the forbidden tree. And that's why death and death many you know, it's action reaction. Sins enter mankind because of the free will. You go against God, sin enter mankind. From that moment on, the many reactions that come after. Death, misery, pain, all kind of diseases. So it makes perfect sense. But clearly you need to study the Holy Bible. You need to study the Holy Bible to understand that God is actually not responsible for all that. We are the ones that need to be responsible for our actions and choice. We choose by our free will to go against God. Sin enters mankind. From that moment on we can die. Diseases come in the flesh and all kind of miserable things because of our choice to go against God. So don't blame God for that, my friend. Blame yourself, right? Blame yourself for sinning every day. God is not responsible for your sins, my friend. Shame on you, right? Shame on you for calling it God's responsibility. Yeah, for sure he's a Christian. Do you see it, love to love? <laughs> I'm a Christian. Yeah, right. And you don't understand the basic teaching of Christianity, basic teaching of the Holy Bible. That does not make sense. Inconsistencies in the New Testament books and between the Old and New Testament? What? Yeah, guys, truly this guy is a Christian. <laughs> truly this guy is a Christian, right? Try, right, you see that, right? I mean, come on, man. Brother, huh? <laughs> this guy is a Christian. The fact that many, many books, I, I think he meant to say many books of the New Testament were written hundreds of years after Jesus was supposed to have been alive, hardly eyewitness. That's a lie, my friend. No, the New Testament, if you studied, again, you see, this, this is the ignorance of this, of this so-called Christian, guys. This is the ignorance of this so-called Christian. He claims to be a Christian, but he doesn't know that the New Testament was written in the first century by the eyewitnesses. John was an eyewitness. John wrote John, right? John wrote the Gospel of John. Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew. So, what, and were these people eyewitnesses? Were they eyewitnesses of Jesus? Yes, they were. They saw Jesus raising people from death. Jesus raised people from death. 
right? He gave life to dead people. Jesus healed the sick, they were eyewitnesses. What are you talking about? What about when God from heaven, guys pay attention. When Jesus went to John the Baptist, to the river Jordan, when Jesus went to be baptized, to be anointed, right? Christ, guys, Jesus Christ means the anointed Savior. Remember, we gave a teaching about it a couple weeks ago, right? A couple live shows ago, we mentioned that Jesus, and we destroyed one of the boyfriends of uh, Fifi, i.e. Farid, right? Who were attacking Christian Prince. You remember my teaching about it? You, I think you remember if you saw that live show. We destroyed them about the meaning, the name of the meaning of, uh, sorry, the meaning of the name of Jesus Christ. The anointed Savior, right? The anointed God saves. The anointed God. Thank you for your donations, guys. God bless you. Love to love. God bless you, sister or brother. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think you're a sister. Abdul's, we see right through you. We are not fools, she says. Your taqiyya does not work for us Christians. That's how blind and ignorant you choose to be. Exactly. Amen to that. So... <laughs> <laughs> Hardly eyewitnesses, guys. So let me go back to the story. When Jesus went to John the Baptist, right, to be anointed, because it was mentioned in Isaiah that the Messiah will be anointed, right? And when he went to be baptized by John the Baptist, the Messiah must prove that he's the anointed one. So how is that? God the Father send the Holy Spirit to anoint Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, right? The Messiah must be anointed by God himself to prove that he's the Messiah. So God the Father sent the Holy Spirit to anoint Jesus Christ, the Messiah, right? So he was anointed. This is why the Messiah is the anointed one, right? So Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and God the Father with many ear witnesses and eyewitnesses to see, many who were standing there hearing the massive voice of God the Father from heaven. Quote unquote, God the Father says, this is my beloved son, listen to him. I mean, how much more evidence do you need? How many eyewitnesses? Hardly eyewitnesses, the Abdul says. You know, you know an Abdul, don't act to be a Christian. If you clearly, if you clearly, are a Christian, you will have known <laughs> that there are many eyewitnesses for Jesus. How dare you to claim to be a Christian and talk about hardly eyewitnesses? There's something wrong with you, my friend. You really need, if you claim to be a Christian, you need to study your Bible, my friend. I mean, didn't Jesus says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father? Right, guys? I mean, I can, I can claim to be a Christian I go on the street and I rob people, I kill people, and I, I come back and I ask God for forgiveness. And the next day I do the same over and over again. I mean, uh, didn't Jesus said it? Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father. I.e. the kingdom of heaven. Right, guys? And then he continues his rant. Pagan ceremonies became Christian ceremonies, what a massive coincidence. What are you talking about? What pagan ceremonies? Are you talking about uh, Safa wal Marwa running between two hills? Or are you talking about going around the Kaaba seven times like the pagans used to do? The pagan Sabians used to do? Is that what you're talking about? I, I, why are you not giving me any examples to refute, my friend? <laughs> I'm a Christian, quote unquote. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. So guys, and I said to him, as you see here in my last comment, so here I said, come watch my live show. And I gave him the link to do today's live show starting in seven minutes. I will try to address a couple of your questions. Deal? So I hope he, he's here and I hope he saw how I addressed all of his questions one by one. Right? So guys, I really need, wanted to address this guy who claims to be a Christian. I mean, the things that he's asking, that is causing him to be confused, you know, these are actually basic stuff, basic stuff. 
about Christianity. And you claim to be a Christian, you don't know about this? Well, there's something wrong with you, my friend. You need to study your Bible better if you claim to be a Christian. Guys, now let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back to our original teaching because you know that was not the topic that I wanted to address right but it is what it is since it's common objections against the deity of Christ we are not afraid to address anything thank you Carrie Ann God bless you for your donations sister thank you all of you God bless you God bless your families thank you for your support through donations thank you I appreciate it. So <clears throat> let's see about the Quran, guys. If we go to chapter 9, if we go to chapter 9, ayah 30, the Quran is addressing what the Jews are saying. The Jews say, Hosea, there's nothing called Ezra, right? Don't get fooled by false translations. Here, this is, I think, the translation of Al Maududi. Yeah, Al Maududi. He's he's trying, you know, he's a scumbag, as you see. But at the same time, he's putting it between brackets. Hosea, no, I challenge you to show me from the Holy Bible where Ezra is called Hosea. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I'll give any Muslim a thousand dollars if you can show me from the Holy Bible. Let's say from the Old Testament, where Ezra is being called Uzair. Is that a good challenge, guys? Is that a good deal? I think it's a good deal, right? I mean, you, you're going to earn $1,000 if you can show me the name Uzair, that is the same person as Ezra. No, you cannot. So here, this is a lie about the Jews. The Jews never claimed that Ezra is Uzair, or the Jews never claimed that there's a guy in the Holy Bible in the Old Testament whose name is Uzair. So this is a lie. On top of that, Jews don't believe in Allah. Disaster number two. So disaster number one, there's nothing called Uzair, and Jews don't believe in Allah. And the Christians say, what, does the, what do the Christians say? The Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. Again, this is a lie. Christians don't make this claim. Christians don't say the Messiah is the son of Allah. Right? Because Christians don't believe in Allah. Right? Christians don't believe in Allah. Who is Allah, man? We only know that Allah was a pre-Islamic moon idol. And he had a wife called Akbar, the son. And he had three, da three daughters, Allah al uzza wal manat. Right? You see how, how the so-called God of Islam we know it's Muhammad. These are the fabrications of Muhammad, who is lying about the Jews and the Christians over and over. Not only that, if we continue reading, it says, these are merely verbal assertions in imitation of the saying of those unbelievers who preceded them. May Allah ruin them. Wow. So if you believe, guys, if you believe, if you believe, Allah says, may Allah ruin them. How many gods are there in Islam, guys? I mean, if we ask Muslims, who is the one talking in the Quran? Who, who, what is the Quran? They say it's the speech of Allah. So how is Allah, how can Allah say, may Allah, how can Allah say, may Allah? So Allah no, number one is saying, may Allah number two ruin them? What? Allah is saying, may Allah ruin them? You see... <laughs> Let it go, Christians. Let it go. Let it go. You know, Muslims are not, not even thinking about these disasters. But it's actually, it's a huge crime to say that Allah has a son, basically, right? That's the point here. That's basically the context of this ayah. If you're saying that Allah has a son, Allah will ruin you. <laughs> so it's actually a huge sin in Islam to say that Allah has a son and then it continues how do they turn away from the truth uh -huh. Muslims you really need to think about this because we're going to prove to you in a couple of 
minutes, uh, this is going to be a disaster for you. Let me go to other ayahs, guys, to show you. To show you that Islam, especially in the Quran, as you see, that Allah is making clear, Allah has no son. Allah has no son. Allah is not a father. Allah is not a father. Allah is not a father. That's basically what Allah wants Muslims to understand in the Quran. If you go to chapter 4 from Surah An Nisa, Ayah 157, and it says, and their sayings, who? The Jews. Surely we have killed the Messiah, Isa, son of Maryam. So the Jews are claiming they are the ones who killed Isa, the Messiah, son of Maryam. First of all, the Jews never killed the Messiah. Right? Jews did not kill the Messiah. The Romans did. The Romans did. Jews didn't do that. Jews had no authority. It was not their way of punishment of putting someone on the cross. That was a Roman punishment. All right? That was a Roman punishment. It was not a Jewish punishment. Jews used to stone people for blasphemy. Jews never put anyone on the cross. That was a Roman practice and a Roman practice alone. So Jews never made this claim. And on top of that, Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. So how can Jews? Yes, the Jews wanted Jesus dead. Yes, they didn't kill him. Those were the Romans who did it. And on top of that, how can they make this claim if they are still waiting for the Messiah? Right? Does that make sense? Does that ring a bell, Muslims? How can Jews, the Jews who reject Jesus as the Messiah, how can they make a claim that Jesus is the Messiah? They rejected that Jesus is the Messiah. Do you see it? So this ayah is a huge fabrication from Muhammad. We can actually make that conclusion. This ayah is a huge fabrication. Huge fabrication because the Jews would never call Jesus the Messiah who rejected him because they are still waiting for the Messiah to come. Bam! Clear proof that this ayah is a fabrication from Muhammad. And we know where Muhammad got this from, guys. If you go and study the second, third century document called the Treaties of the Great Seth, and I think our admins can provide you the link for that from Wikipedia or whatever link you want to. You can just put it in Google. The second treatise of the Great Set was a second or third century document written by Gnostic people who rejected that Jesus died actually on the cross. And they thought that someone else, like Simon of Cyrene, was put on the cross. So Muhammad actually copied that, gave his own twist, and he put it here in this ayah. How many times did we tell you guys, Muhammad, Muhammad never came with anything new. Muhammad did not come with anything new. Allah already existed before Islam. He simply took that God, that pre-Islamic supreme moon idol, and he adopted an Islam, and he destroyed the 300... Uh, 59 idols, right? That were present in the Kaaba. So he only took one God. Uh, Black F Frost, I addressed your questions. I addressed your questions. So if you um, are interested to see, I know you're in the live chat, I see your name. If you are interested in me addressing your questions, you need to replay the live show again. I addressed all of your questions, okay? That you put in the comment. All right, as I promised. When I say something, I'm going to do it. And I gave you the link, right? So if you are interested how I'm addressing your questions, go back and you'll see in the beginning of this live show how I addressed all your points one by one. So let me go back. So, as you see, the Quran is lying. Muhammad is the one who's fabricating ayahs. Co copy it from here and there, from legend stories, from man-made documents, writings that existed in the 2nd and 3rd century in Egypt. This is Egypt, guys. 
And those documents used to circle around the Arabic Peninsula. And Muhammad as a merchant working under Khadija, he had access to these man-made books that came much later in the second and third century. Jesus lived in the first century in the flesh. When he came in the flesh and the disciples, they lived in the first century. That document was written much too late, right? Much too late. I mean, I can write something now and say, hey, uh, uh, Jesus, God forbid, Jesus was an alien. Would you accept it? Of course not. It's not written by eyewitnesses, not by the disciples. So, we, of course, we're going to reject it. If we say Muhammad uh, uh, was a pig, Muslims will deny that because they say, you wrote it, right? You wrote it. We cannot accept it. This is not Quran. So, why would you accept that Muhammad took a writing that was man-made saying that Jesus did not die or was crucified. And you see why if we continue reading. So it says the apostle of Allah, right? Isa, he's the apostle of Allah and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him. Muhammad copy pasted this from the second treatise of the great Seth. Let me show you. I'm not sure if the Edmonds actually already provided it, but let me give, show you the link in front of you. Just a second, guys. This is the second treatise of the Great Set. Do you see it? Let me make it bigger for you. Now if we scroll down. The second treatise of the Great Set is an apocryphal gnostic writing discovered in the Codex seven of the Nag Hammadi codices, which is in Egypt in the third century. Do you see it? So of course we're going to reject it because this is man-made and this is written by Gnostic, right? This is a apocryphal Gnostic writing written by men like you and me. <laughs> so the author is unknown. Look at this. And the set reference in the type appears nowhere in the text. And if we continue reading, continue reading, the author appears to belong to a group of Gnostics <laughs> who maintain that Jesus was not crucified on the cross. Do you see? Not crucified on the cross, right? Instead, the text says that Simon of Cyrene was mistaken for Jesus and crucified in his place. Do you see it? Do you see it? So Muhammad actually got this and put it in the Quran, right? Here, <laughs> copy paste, right? Copy paste, aha! Muhammad copied again, exactly, Dolora Sarab, welcome. Exactly, you got the idea. And this document, this document, the second treatise of the great set, let me give you the link again used to circle around in the Arabic Peninsula. This was done, written in Egypt. Jesus lived where? Where did Jesus live? In Israel, All right? This was written in Egypt. <laughs> and much too late, as we showed you. This is from the third, sorry, let me go back. This was from the third century, much too late and not in the area. Of course, we're going to reject it. This is man-made. This is writ written by a guy who doesn't even believe that Jesus was crucified. Right? But Muhammad, he had access to these books. As you see, he had access to many legend stories, many legend books, many apocryphal writing like the second treatise of the great set, and he was copying them and put them in the Quran. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Right? وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ This was not new. This is why we always say Muhammad did not bring anything new. Right, guys? Right? This is why we, we Christian apologists always make this claim. Muhammad did not bring anything new. We already knew about this. Christians who lived in the Middle East, they had access to these books. They knew these are man-made written documents. This is why we reject them. These are not written by eyewitnesses. They were written much too late in the third century. 
in a different area in Egypt, not in Jerusalem, where all the action happened, right? where the crucifixion happened. So, of course, we're going to reject the Quran too, because the Quran did not bring anything new. We already know about this, right? as we showed you. And it says, but it appeared to them. Where did we find this? It appeared to them, right? So who is the one appeared to them? It was Simon of Cyrene, mistaken. <laughs> Do you see it? So Simon of Cyrene, let's say Simon of Cyrene, according to this second treatise, was the one to be crucified. And the poor Christians were actually deceived, thinking that it was Jesus. Do you see it? Jesus is described as standing by and laughing at the ignorance. <laughs> Where did you hear this again from? From Muhammad, from the Quran. Those who believe Jesus to have died on the cross are said to believe in a doctrine of a dead man. All those without gnosis, including those who had what become orthodox believe. So you see, this is a man-made written document written much too late in the third century and Muhammad had access to these books. Bam! Aha! Uh -huh, now we understand why Muhammad was confused. Why Muhammad was confused about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Aha! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. oh, 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 This is a huge disaster. Huge disaster for Muslims. Now, guys, to e make it even more worse for the Muslims, to make it even more worse for the Muslims, to prove actually that the Quran, when Muh you know, Muhammad, he busted himself. The, the moment Muhammad opened his mouth, he was actually, actually, was causing damage. The moment Muhammad spoke and fabricating eyes in the Quran, he already busted himself. And we are showing you in the following proof. Why? Again from the Quran. Chapter 5, Ayah 117. Right? It says here again, Jesus is the one talking. When we ask Muslims, who is the Quran? What is the Quran? It's the speech of Allah. So why is Jesus talking? Anyway, let it go. Jesus saying, I did not say to them, to ought, I did not say to them, ought save what thou they didst enjoy me with, that serve Allah, my Lord and your Lord, and I was witness of them so long as I was among them. But when thou, this caused me to die. Wait, Jesus saying, Allah caused him to die? Allah is talking, so Jesus is talking to Allah here, guys, and he's saying, you caused me to die? Why Muslims are always, when we ask them, Jesus, did Jesus die? They say no. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Caused to die. So Jesus is saying, you caused me to die. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي Caused me to die. What? Cause me to die. Wait, you Muslims always say, you Muslims always say that Jesus did not die. Why is the Quran saying that Jesus, why is Jesus in the Quran claiming that Allah caused him to die? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Let me show you guys what this word means. To a fate any. You know, when I put it in Google Translate, guys, let me show you. Let me go to Google Translate. This is what I get. Arabic. What does it say? Tawafaytani. Tawafaytani. Tawafaytani, right? You passed away. You know, it is, comes out funny, but you get the idea. It means passed away, right? Tawafaytani, you caused me to die. Right? You caused me to die. Though, this caused me to die. So Allah caused Jesus to die. Did you see it? 
When I say, let's say, guys, Abuya Tawaffa, Tawaffa, root word, Tawaffaytani, you caused me to die. Abuya Tawaffa, it means my father died. Right? My father died. Abuya Tawaffa. You hear it? Tawaffa, Tawaffaytani. Tawaffa, Tawaffaytani. So here, Jesus actually confirming to die. And who is the one causing him to die? It's Allah. So here, the death of Jesus is confirmed. Chapter 5, ayah 117. But if you go to many false translation, here actually, this guy is actually Shakir. We should thank Shakir for giving us the right translation. If you go to any liar, let's, let's pick Pictol. You see how Pictol is going to lie. The word is completely gone. Where's the word? Do you see it? It says, I dwelt among them, and when thou took me though, where, the, where is the word? The word is gone in the translation. Completely gone. Let me go back to Shakir. Shakir is not playing taqiya. He's not using taqiya. And he did add the word. But when do, this caused me to die. So the rest of the translators, the scumbags, the liars, the deceivers, like their Allah, using taqiya and deception, removing this entire word. When you caused me to die. Yeah, Yusuf Ali again. Yes, it says, do, took me up, but they removed this entire word from the translation. Do you see it? Allah is the one causing him to pass away, to die, right? So here, actually, if you study this ayah carefully, Muhammad actually is not denying that the Romans killed him. Muhammad here is denying if you... <laughs> Read it like this. This is addressing the Jews, right? Yes, the Jews were not the ones who not, did not kill Jesus. It was the Romans. So the death and resurrection is actually being confirmed because this is talking about the Jews. The Jews did not kill Jesus. The Romans killed Jesus. Yes, the Jews wanted Jesus dead, but the Romans killed Jesus, not the Jews. So do you see... How this now makes sense when you put chapter 5, I 117, that confirms the, G the death of Jesus. This is not my translation, Muslims. This is your Islamic translation. Don't blame me. Uh, Abu Musa, ya donkey ibn donkey, call me, my Skype is open. Call me, and I challenge you to refute me on this. I challenge me to refute Shakir. This is your translation, not mine. You see it? This is an Abdul like you. So who is deceiving who, Abdul? Jesus is the one talking here, and he's saying, do cause me to die. So here the death of Jesus is being confirmed on the cross. Wow! By who? By Allah. Wow! Iqra! Iqra! Read your Quran, Abdul. Guys, take a screenshot, please, and make sure to go to Shakir. His translation for this ayah. To see how the death of Jesus on the cross is being confirmed. Take a screenshot now. Chapter 5, ayah 107. Use this in your debates. Whenever a Muslim denies the death of Jesus on the cross, show him this translation. Because this translation is actually correct. Do you see it? Jesus is confirming his death on the cross. This is QuranWow.com. Let me give you the link, guys. Let me give you the link. This is an official Quran website. I just gave you the link. Bookmark it, save it. Help me to help you. Help yourself in your debates with Muslims. Okay? This is the translation of Shakr, as we said. Do, do, this caused me to die. So Allah caused Jesus to die. Right? So here, the Quran is actually confirming the death of Jesus on the cross. See why we always say only and only the truth will set you free? Only and only the truth will set you free. And do you see how important it is to know Arabic like me, guys? Do you see why it's so important to always go back to the Quranic, or sorry, the Arabic of the Quran? 
the original Arabic to understand what these words mean. And finally, finally, we can find a correct translation. This guy forgot to use taqiyah that morning when he was translating this ayah, like the rest of the translators. Right? Um, love to love. Thank you for a donation again, sister. God bless you. Non-Arabic Muslims, how can you rely your eternal soul to a region you are not certain they are li all lying? Yes, exactly. The Lord says, be careful of false prophets. Hell is not a joke. Amen, sister. Do you see how they are being deceived? This is why we always say, and I mentioned this before we started our today's teaching, right? We told you, we told you. Only the truth and only the truth will set you free. And we don't hate Muslims. We actually love you Muslims. This is why we are doing this to show you the truth. You have been deceived. You have been fooled by your lying and deceptive Imams. Your stars in Indonesia, Malaysia. They have been lying to you. You don't know Arabic. You are a victim of this Arabic man-made sex cult called Islam. You are deceived. You are a victim. Please leave Islam right here, right now. Leave Islam. Stay away from Islam. Drop Muhammad and come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the proof is in front of you. Jesus actually claiming to die. Jesus claiming that Allah caused him to die. So how dare you to lie about your Quran and say Jesus did not lie, uh, did not die on the cross. Actually, his death is confirmed here. Do you see it? His death on the cross is being confirmed by the Quran. Chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, uh, Ayah 117. Tawafaytani, you caused me to die. Allah, you caused me to die, says Jesus. Why are you not calling me Muslims? My, my Skype is open. Oh, someone called me, okay. Someone called me, let, let me call him back. Guys, put your headsets on. Let me try to call this Abdul back. I hope it's not going to be ultimate shirk. Pick up Abdul. Send me a message if you are ready. Someone else called me too. I'm not sure why my Skype is not coming through. I'm not sure what's happening. But let me call him back. I will get the message anyway, right? This is the guy that we spoke earlier to this guy. Pick up, I'm calling you. Good Abdul. My friend, pick up. Hey, Rob. Hey, hi, my friend. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I hope you're doing fine too. I hope you have a wonderful yes. day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a good day, you know. Uh, the God blesses us all, so it's great. All right, all right. My friend, uh, you called me. I'm not sure what's happening with Skype, but some sometimes the call does not go through. So I, but I will get the message to call you back. You know. So this is why I called you back. Uh, you sure. called me. Right, your life, yes, your yes. life on air. People are listening. So go ahead. Right. So, I mean, you you discussed a lot of things today, and I'm just going to begin with what you're talking about right now. Is that okay? Okay, go ahead. Uh, and, and before I move, I, I'd like to say that uh, um, there is free will in Islam. Uh, you are just being unfair in representing Islam here. I, I sure. Anyway, I sure. We will, we will move to that after we deal with this. Uh, Wafata, all right. Okay. So can we you, can we deal with chapter five, I hundred and seventeen first? Is that yeah? Sure, sure, okay, sure. Correct. Of course. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so why is it that you're choosing only Shakir when all the other major translations don't uh, say the same thing? Well, because first of all, I know Arabic, and I gave an example. When I say in the Arabic, let's say I give the my father is is dead. May God have his soul, receive his soul. When I say my father died in the Arabic, I'm an Arabic speaker. I say Abuya, my father died, Abuya Tawaffa. The word here is Tawafaytani. It means you caused me to die. And this is why our friend Shakri here, who is not using lies, deception and taqiyah, saying, because Jesus the one is talking here, he says, 
but when thou dost cause me to die. So Jesus is confirming his death, saying that Allah is the one who made him die. Do you understand why? No. Yes, I understand. But you, you do, you do know that uh, in Arabic words are either hakika or majazi. You, you do know this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, do you do you know? Do you speak Arabic, my friend? Do you speak Arabic? I'm not a native Arab speaker. I'm okay. just learning Arabic. Okay, so you're I, learning. I will not be able to converse with you. Yes. Okay. So, why why do you think all major translations are take are saying you took me up, while only Shakir uh, chose to say you know. Uh, you caused me to die. It's, it's not only so we, that, we, my friend. It's not only that they actually removed the entire word. The whole okay, word, let's, let's, the whole word is gone. Do you see it? This part, it's not there. Let me go to any translation. Let's say, let me go to. Why didn't you go to Sahih International? You, you love that translation, don't you? No, I don't, because it's made by three <laughs> women, right? What, 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 three, uh, Muhammad, three, is a, three is a good number. No, Muhammad said mm -hmm. women are half brains, and especially if let me let me before go there, just let me show you something funny about Sahih International. Okay, uh, I hope you're not going to laugh. Actually, this is this is the actual fact about Sahih International, guys. I hope you are uh, seeing this. Let me make this bigger for everyone to read. I hope uh, this is big enough for you guys. Can you can you see the text? I hope it's clear enough. Yeah. If we, I just Googled it, okay? Sahih International by three women. You see the screen, right? Right, yes. Okay. If we go down, you will see it's available throughout the world. It's the most used translation in the English for the Quran. The Holy Quran, there's nothing called Holy. It's Quran al Karim, else it would have been called Al Quran al Muqaddas. So this is a lie. There's nothing called Holy Quran in Islam. It's a translation by three American women converts. <laughs> they are not native Arabic speakers like me. One of them is called Emily Asami. This Emily Asami. Emily is not a common Islamic Arabic name. Amatullah Bentley. This is not a common Arabic Islamic name. Bentley for sure is not an Arabic name. Mary Kennedy. <laughs> You see, these are not even Arab people. These are converts naming themselves Sahih International. And this is the most used translation of Quran today in the world. Do you see it? So this is right. really, really, really a funny fact that the Quran, the most used translation of the Quran is written by three women who are not even Arab people. One of them is called Emily. The other one, her last name is Bentley. And the other one is even more worse, Mary Kennedy. So a lot see, of Muslims see, who don't know Arabic like you, and I think you are, you are, as you mentioned, you are not an Arabic speaker. You're actually a victim of an Arabic cult, man-made cult called Islam. This is why. Sure, Rob, but the thing is, look, we all speak English now, but none of us yeah. are from England or, or from America. That does that, not mean someone so? cannot reach, re, learn a language. So uh, it, it doesn't prove your point. You know, the, you know who the, the greatest grammarian in, in Arabic? It was Sibawe. Sibawe was not an Arab. Uh, just a second, Vanessa. Please don't call me Vanessa. I'm a, in the middle of a of a, a live talk. Okay, call me when I'm done, please. Someone called us while we are talking. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. R right, right. Anyway, so it. I don't think we can settle this in any other way. You have your opinion, but majority of the translations say uh, raised up to God. So, so you you can just stick with your opinion on this. No, and, no, it's not my with... opinion, my friend. Come on, when, when a word can I can I describe something? Let's say the word death. Can I say that the word death means flying? Can I do that? The word is well, the, the word is death. The word is death. I cannot say it means. Alive, it cannot mean flying. The word is tawafaitani. Tawafaitani. There's no other meaning for tawafaitani except causing someone to die. You are causing me. Who is the one causing uh, Jesus to die? It's Allah, because Jesus is talking to Allah. Jesus is the one speaking in this ayah, right? Yes. And he says, though, who is though? Allah did cause me to die. Jesus is actually confirming. And I put it in Google Translate. Because, you know, let's say Rob Christian is lying. But as you see in the screen is in front of you. This is the same word. Copy paste. I did nothing else. And I pressed translate. 
it says you passed away this comes out funny but you get the idea it means still means passed away and when you say you someone passed away it means they died right you agree yeah but passed away is different from from died it's it's not the same word but it it means that way that doesn't mean tawafaytani necessarily has to mean died my friend if it's i say if i say my dad died and i just gave you an example i say Abuya, my die. My, sorry, my dad, Abuya, Tawaffa, my dad died. I cannot say it in a different way in Arabic. What? How are, how are you going to deal with that, my friend? When someone asks me, where's your father in Arabic? Wayne Abuk, right? Where's your father? I say, Abuya Tawaffa, my father died. Did you get the point? Yes, I, I get so, your point, but that could, that that's just a modern <laughs> convention convention of speaking, right? Uh, no. Okay, let's let's no. let, let's just go let's just go back to the according to speech. according to you, you're not an Arabic speaker, so how do you know? Uh, no, I'm, how, I'm just, how can I'm you just, make a I'm claim? Asking, <laughs> no, my friend, my friend, I'm asking you. Let's be real. Let's you. be real. You are you are no, not an Arab. You. you are not an Arab. You don't know Arabic. You are learning Arabic according to you. You just said it. So how can you make a claim that you have no idea about? You don't you don't speak the language. I mean, let's uh, let's say I'm talking to a Chinese. I say to him, uh, I know you're a Chinese. I know you speak Chinese. I don't speak Chinese, but I can make a claim about the Chinese. Well, I have no clue. I don't speak the language. I don't know what the word means. So how can you make such a claim, my friend? How can you make a claim that this is a modern uh, meaning to it? No. Tawafaytani, Abuya Tawafa, my father died. It has no other definite meaning. It means... He died, and Jesus is the one talking. He's saying, "You, Allah, caused me to die." This because we always say many, many uh, imams are using Islam for business. I mean, just go. Most of the imams, most of the uh, muftis, drive in a big Mercedes. Their sons and daughters drive a huge uh, Mercedes. Uh, last time I checked, there was a guy, uh, you know, a mufti. I saw one of his sons, you know, he drive the last model of, of uh, you know, Islam is a huge business. And one of the uh, leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, his name was Yusuf al-Qaradawi. He said, and he was honest, he said, if the apostasy punishment did not exist today, Islam would have not existed. Because that's what keeping Islam in this cult this man-made code because when you are using fear tactics right terror tactics you are forcing people to stay in Islam of course Muslims will not leave Islam so if penalty for leaving Islam which is death if that did not exist many Muslims will already have left Islam Islam would have died by now well Qardawi can say many things that that doesn't necessarily mean everything that's that's really? what Islam was Qar Qaradawi is a PhD Al Azhari yes, Shunni Sheikh, highly yes, respected in Egypt. If you speak against yes. them, people will lynch you on the street in Egypt. How, so, how can you say that, man? Not, people not, will not, kill not, you. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Not, I'm not aware of uh, the Qardawi statement. Maybe you have to see what, what no, he meant, what was the context. No, here, here's the context. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, just wait. Just wait, my friend. I can show you uh, what he said. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Bear with me, okay, my friend? Sure, sure. This is what he said. Do you see it? Can you read um, what he said? Yeah, it, yeah, this is... Uh, read it, please. I'm please, please. Read it, please. Where, where did he say this? Like, where, like you should see the Do, statement go, in context, right? Go, go, go on YouTube. Go on uh, on uh, Google. You will find what he, that he said it actually. This, these are not my words. This is copy paste what he said. If they had got rid of apostasy punishment today, Islam would not exist today. By Dr. Yusuf Qaradawi, leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. He is a sure, PhD. I, I Do you see DR? Yeah. Anything. So you don't. Thank you. You are yeah. at least. I respect your honesty, my friend. I respect it. Okay, I respect right, when so, someone is honest. I respect that. Okay, right. So, uh, anyways, I'm I'm am still gonna say uh, you know because majority translators uh, don't go with die and they go with raise so, up. So this is this is not a very clear. Uh, this is very you know, clear. Uh, this is very clear, my friend. That's Taqiyya, your opinion. I, I mean, I, no, no, it's not my opinion. It's not my opinion. The proof is in front of you. This is not my translation. This is a translation from a Muslim, highly respected translator, Shakir. 
highly respected guy. <laughs> and he and the word, as I showed you, and I gave you example, I'm an Arabic speaker. I'm not going to lie about my uh, language. When I when someone asks me, where is your father? I'm going to answer him. My father died, and I'm going to address it like this. Abuya, my father, died. Abuya, tawaffa. The root word is tawaffa. Tawaffaytani, you caused me to die. That's it. Nothing else. But when we go to other translators, we can go to Sahih International, no problem. Okay, Let's what see. about Yusuf Ali and what about uh, Mahasin Khan? These are very famous translations. So, can they use they, they Can they use deception or not? No, that, that's the thing. You, 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 what, 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 what if you're the one who's doing taqiyya? Can you not? How? Where is the word? Where, why is he? Where is he? Where is he? This is this is who Yusuf Ali, right? You see Yusuf right. Ali. Where is right. the word translated? Where is the word? Can you show me the word? He he totally took it away. Where is yeah, this word? Thou, Where is this when, word? When when thou didst take me up. No, that's not the word. Falamma when then yeah. thou didst take me up. No, that's not the translation, my friend. Tawafaytani is causing to die. How is this raising someone up? Rafatani. Do you know what the word Rafatani means? That's the actual yes. meaning. Okay, what is Rafatani? Translate. To, to, be, to, to, be, to be raised. Thank you, guys. You heard him. Tawafaytani means to cause to die. Rafatani means to be raised up. So how this became raised up? Please, please address it. You just, guys, did you, did you see what just happened? He just mentioned it. You just mentioned it, my friend. You are yeah, now being yeah, honest. Rafatani means raised me up. Tawafaytani means cause me to die. Thank you. <laughs> Why oh, are right. people calling when I, we are I still, I'm still, I'm Thank still you. Uh, conclu concluding that this is your opinion because... No, 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 no. You just, you guys, you just, you just, you just were honest. I asked you, what is Rafatani? You said it means raised up. So how can Tawafaytani means raised up, but Rafatani means raised up again? Can, uh, please, please. And address your problem, your disaster that you just created. You just created this, not me. Can can, can two words not have same meaning like elevate and no, raise? No. Yes, it can, but not these words. Rafatani uh, clearly that's means opinion, you raised bro. me up. No, 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 no. I'm an Arabic speaker, you are not. Rafatani, it means raise <laughs> yeah, but up, you, raise it, up. Don't you think? Tawafatani means cost to die. My friend, if you can deal with this, Oh, the proof is fine. Out. The proof is we, we will. We Let's will, be we, real. We will, the proof is out. We will let this. We will let this be. Thank we will you. Will let this Thank be you. You, ag this. you agree with me. All Thank right. you. Thank but you. we. But no, we. I don't agree with no, you. No, no, you do. Opinion, you do. You do. You just said it, and people were listening. Don't, my friend. I re I have respect for you. You seem like a really humble person. I respect that. L my friend, many people, many Muslims are claiming that we are hanging out on people, you know, to show them that we are, you know, acting tough. We are hanging on people to mute them. No. The, clear, the proof is in front of you. People are listening. Everything is recorded. You just said it. And I asked you, what does the word Rafatani means? You said it means raised me up. I put it in Google Translate. This word, Tawafaitani, it comes out as passed away. Right? I, and I sh gave you an example. When I say my father died, I say Abuya Tawafa. Abuya Tawafa. My father, Abuya Tawafa, it means he died. That's the only way to say it. Or Abuya Matt, he died. Matt is another word. That, yes, there are many words uh, that, that we can give. But to say it correctly, you say, Tawaffa, he died. Right? He died. He passed away. In a because you're not an Arabic speaker. Let us move to another topic. Go ahead. All right. So uh, let's, go, let's go to uh, free will. What? Why do you why do you claim Islam there is no free will? Okay, here is why. Okay, just a second. Bear with me, okay, my friend. Sure, sure. Okay. I I'm hearing I'm hearing you playing this word. No, I'm just trying to copy paste that. Uh, and okay, no problem. Tawafaitani, exactly. Uh, just a second, my friend. Just a second, okay? Sure. I'm looking up for the hadith. Hmm. 
sometimes when you look for a hadith okay I think I found it okay right okay I think this is the hadith that I was mentioning let me make it bigger you are you are watching to the screen right um yeah it's it's taking time to okay. load because okay the live is do not... you see it sahih muslim do you see it um one second yeah okay good right. this is sahih muslim let me scroll down for right. the reference this is sahih, sure, muslim. Sure, sahih, muslim. sahih okay. muslim hadith number 27 48 b do you see it yeah let, let me also give the link to the audience who are watching you know, so they can read with us. Don't say, don't say this is created by Rob Kishin. This is sunnah.com, official Sunni website. Read with me, my friend. It says, if you are not to commit sin, Allah would have swept you out of existence and would right. have replaced you by another people who have committed sin. Right? Yeah. All right. So who is talking here? Allah's messenger. So Muhammad is the one talking. He's doing the talk. Okay. So he says, if you don't actually commit sin, Allah will remove you from existence and would replace you by another people who committed sin and then ask forgiveness from Allah and he would have granted them pardon. So according to this ayah, let's say I'm a really good Muslim. Okay, I'm a Muslim, I'm a good Muslim, I don't like to sin. According to Muhammad himself, because Muhammad is doing the talking here, if you don't sin, Allah doesn't like that, Allah will take you, rem remove you, right? He will, would have swept you out of existence and he would replace you by another people who actually do commit sin because Allah needs people to be forgiven. So where is your free will? Where is, is your free will as a Muslim? This is not according to me, this is according to Muhammad. Where is your free will if Allah does not like you to not commit sin? Go ahead. All right, so uh, we know that from other hadith, uh, every every son of Adam sins. Uh, exactly. And, uh, exactly. And uh, so from that, it's sure that everybody sins. So there is not, there's not a possibility anybody exists who doesn't sin. Everyone, every man sins. Are you sure? Right? Are you sure? Uh, yeah, it extends to the prophets also. They commit minor sins, but God forgives them because uh, their their cases are different. But moving forward, no, 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 uh, no, 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 not not moving forward. Was was uh, Jesus touched by Satan, or is he wholly sinless in Islam? Well, you use three different things. You said touched by <laughs> Satan, holy, sinless. They three different things. Uh, which no, one? No, 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 no. When Satan, let's say, right. let, let let us go to Muhammad. Was Muhammad's mother? And father, were they touched by by Satan? Yes. Was Muhammad touched by Satan? Yes. Who is the only man, according to the Quran, who is not sinner? It's Jesus, because it the Quran says Jesus is holy son. He is La, sinless. Uh, yeah. Pure. Yes. Ghulam and Zakiya. Exactly. Zakiya, so yeah. yeah. No, so not, he's not holy. He is. Yes. It means holy. Do you want me to show it you? It means pure. It means pure. Pure. What is pure? <laughs> what is pure? pure? It means without any sin, right? Okay, let's let's put this thank in context. You, thank uh, you, thank you. No, no, I'm, no that's no, what no, I said. No, 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 my friend. I didn't say that. I'm, my friend, no need, no need, no need. Taqiyya does not work with me, okay? If you want to be humble and respectful with a, a nice, respectful discussion with me, no need to use taqiyya. Taqiyya and, and myself don't go along, okay? So it means actually someone who is pure, who never committed any sin. So... My following up question, according to this hadith, I showed you this hadith. Why did Allah not remove Jesus from existence? Go ahead. No, I, I, Since I Jesus is sinless, Allah. he is pure. Why did Allah not remove Jesus from existence, but he actually caused him to die and took him up to heaven? Why is Jesus, Isa, you call him Isa, why is Isa in the Islamic paradise, you call Jannah, why is he with Allah? And why did Allah, according to Muhammad himself, not remove Isa from existence for not committing any sin? Go ahead. Uh, can we go back to Ghulam and Zakiya first? Go, go ahead. You yeah, just so, said it's pure. What is pure? Oh, all right. So if you if you allow me, 
Go ahead. Right. So the Quran was revealed uh, amongst the Jews as well, in the sense when the Prophet Muhammad was in Medina, the Jews were an immediate audience. And they denied the Messiah. They denied Jesus as their Messiah. In the sense, uh, Which they Jews? only mocked Which him. Jews? Which Jews? The, the, Jew, the Jews at the time of Jesus, they mocked no, him. No, no. The first Christians, my friend, the first Christians were Jews. What are you talking about? Yeah, we're talking about the Jews who didn't, who who uh, rebuked against him. Who exactly. Took him to okay. The, okay. But you right. need you need to be specific because you know when you say something, be specific. The ones who were actually were deluded, ignorant about who Jesus was, but his followers who were actually Jews, they accepted him. His the eyewitnesses were Jews. The 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 twelve disciples were Jews. So you need to be specific. sure, sure, sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So so the ones the ones who. Uh, the ones who gave him a hard time, the ones who rebuked him, the ones who uh, denied him, yes. uh, all of them, all of them. If if you look, if you read the um, uh, the, the book of the Jews, uh, apart from the Torah, the like book of the Talmud, Jews. and uh, God, my like friend, the, my like friend, the, we don't accept that. I'm not a Jew. I don't follow the Talmud. Okay. No, I'm not asking you to fo follow it. I'm just. There was nothing called him, Talmud uh, when the Torah was written down or the Old Testament. It came much sure, later. It's it's basically. For the Jews and the Jews alone, we don't go by that. So there's no sure, need sure. to to mention. I'm not mentioning uh, uh, the book of the Hindus uh, to you because you you will reject it too, right? No, but I'm I'm not asking okay. you to accept it. Okay. I'm I'm telling you that the Jews actually uh, accused Mary of you know uh, adultery. And, uh, and do you accept uh, that? Do you accept it about Mary? <laughs> We don't, and that's why the okay. Quran is. We don't do that. Jesus. So, what's your point? Go to the point, please. Don't give me speech, my friend. Okay, I don't have right. time. To, we have many uh, callers, so come to the point. What's your point? Yeah, the, the the point is the Quran is defending the honor of Jesus being uh, a son born uh, from purity, not not born from adultery. No, 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 no. Pure, my friend. Pure. It does not talk about that. It's not addressing Mary. Mary is addressed her purity, you know, that she did commit adultery. It's already addressed in a different eye. This is talking about Jesus and Jesus alone. There's no need to do all kind of mental gymnastics, my friend. I told you, I told you, I am immune for taqiyah. This is talking about who? Jesus. This is not talking about his mother. This is talking about Jesus who is sinless, who was not touched by Satan. I challenge you to give me one ayah from the Quran where it says that Jesus is touched by Satan. Jesus is pure, holy. I can give you different translation where it actually says Ghulam al that it means holy son. What are you talking about? What has right, holy exactly. what has holy pure to pure do son. with adultery? Why 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 are you why are you tap dancing, my friend? Come on, man. People are not stupid. We are in 2020. We can read. We know the language. We can read the Arabic. We can go to the translation. We can go to the tafsir. Please. For the respect of this discussion, I am respecting you. Please respect me back. Don't need to use taqiyya with me because I'm going to, to spank it, okay? People are, are witnesses. This is recorded. Don't use taqiyya with me, my friend. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus is not is the only man who is not touched by Satan. Muhammad's parents, both of them are burning in hellfire. Abdullah died as a mushrik. Amina, the mother of Muhammad, died as a mushrika. And Muhammad asked Allah to forgive her. Allah didn't want to have, to have anything to do with that. Allah did not forgive her. But Mary, she, is, she was a believer. Jesus is not touched by Satan. He is the only man who is not touched by... He is holy. He is pure, free from any sin. So again, according to this hadith, let us go back to the hadith that is in front of you. According to Allah, if anyone is being righteous, he is not committing any sin like Jesus, Allah would remove him from existence. So here Muhammad caused a huge disaster. Why did Allah not remove Jesus out of existence? And why is Jesus now in? No, 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 no. The hadith is clear. Please, my friend. The hadith is Did you go offline? Yeah, I think something happened, but I think the stream is coming back again there was a hiccup guys yeah. refresh right. refresh something happened i don't know what happened that's this is youtube we have to deal with all kind of things so <clears throat> guys are you let me let me ask the people guys are you still uh, with us 
Okay, there was a buffering. Okay, people are back on. Okay. So the hadith is in front of you, my friend. The hadith is in front right. of you. It's clear. Muhammad is saying if someone does not sin, i.e. Jesus, Allah would remove him or her out of existence and replace him with a true sinner. Because Allah, his job is to forgive people according to Muhammad himself in this hadith. And this is not just a hadith, this is Sahih Muslim. Uh, you, have enough, no problem, you, have, you have to deal with this, my friend. All right, we are, we are perfectly fine with it. The point is that Jesus will return and then he will die and then he will have a normal death like anybody else. For now, we know that he has been only raised up, as, no, as you mentioned no, 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 in the no, no, earlier. This has nothing to do with the hadith. This has nothing to do with hadith. Deal with the hadith, my friend. We already addressed. We so, already addressed. We already addressed, and we gave you two meanings for two words. One of them is raised up, rafatani, and the other one is tawafaitani. Rafatani and tawafaitani is totally different word. One is saying raise up. The other one says cause me to die. Don't even go there. We already addressed that. Address the fact that this hadith is saying. And we are talking about free will. How how is Jesus sinless, pure, with, without any sin? He is not touched by Satan. This is clear evidence in Islam. This is a clear effect in Islam. Why did Allah, according to Muhammad's claim here, Muhammad is fabricating clearly, why Allah did not remove Jesus from existence? Go ahead. Well, Jesus is eventually going to be removed. The, the end of the world has not no, taken place, has it? My friend, I have, I, have no, I have no time for... Uh, I have no time anymore for you. You're a waste of time. You're wasting my time. Guys, I gave him enough chances, guys. We are talking for at least 50 minutes or something. Look at this, man. Please, my friend, go study, come back. Clearly, you have no much to say. We talked about the Quranic Aya, guys. We gave you to a faith and the real meaning, right? And Shaker here is the only, he's actually the only translator that I could find who was actually honest. To a faith and I asked him, what does Rafatani mean? Rafatani means raised up. To a faith and means passed away or caused me to die. To a faith and Death is death. Raised up, raised up. To a Rafatani, to a faith and Rafatani raised up. So a fate and he caused me to die. It is what it is. You have to deal with this disaster. Clearly, here in this ayah, Jesus is confirming his death on the cross. You have to deal with this. Guys, are you still with me? Guys, are you still with me? I'm not sure what's happening. Guys, give me one if you're still with me. Yeah, I think it's buffering. I have no idea why. So Muslims have to deal with the fact that the word fatani means cause to die. And they have to deal with the fact that Jesus, who they claim that it's Isa, according to Islam, is now with Allah. Muhammad is, is in his grave. Jesus, who they claim to be Isa, is with Allah. Why did Muhammad make this lying claim? This is Clearly a lie. You Muslims say free will exists in Islam. No. How is free will existing in Islam? Well, Muhammad is clearly talking here. Muhammad said, not me. This is Sahih Muslim saying, if you are not going to commit any sin, Allah would remove you out of existence and replace you with people who actually do sin. Right? So, in reaction to that, the Quran says Jesus is holy, pure. He is not touched by Satan. He is without any sin. How can Muhammad make a cake like this and eat it too, making such a huge claim, but at the same time we see that Jesus did not commit any sin. Even the Holy Bible is clear about it. Jesus did not commit any sin and he challenged people to, shame, to show him where he was sinning and no one could actually uh, deal with that challenge. They all failed for the challenge. Jesus was sinless. He never committed any sin. Why, according to this hadith, why did Allah not remove Jesus that you call Isa out of existence for being holy without any sin? You see here, Muhammad actually 
busted himself. You have to deal with this. You can't say this is weak hadith. This is da'if, brother. Brother, this hadith is da'if. No, Habibi, no, 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 no. This hadith is sahih. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 27, uh, 2748b. Okay? And we gave you the link. Let me give you again the link. Copy it, guys. Bookmark it. Save it. Okay. Peter Jean called me. Let me call him back. Just a second. Guys, please don't call me when we are having another call. There's no point. Hey, what's up, brother? How are you? Hey, hello. Welcome. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. fine. Yeah, I was just wanting to ask you a question uh, about the live discussion. Um, okay. Are I, you before we go there? Are you a Christian or a Muslim, my friend? Oh uh, no, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. You I just Christian. wanted to ask you because of of, okay. of the Arabic of the text. Yes. So my question is basically about uh, chapter nineteen, verse thirty-three. Does it just like just prove? Let me go point? there first, my friend. Let me mm -hmm. go there first. You mm -hmm. know, so people can read with us. Nineteen. Let me go there. Pa, pa, pa. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, seeing that Jesus died, right? Or is this like the Arabic that uh, it's a mystery? Yeah. Here, <laughs> here it says the following. Okay. Here you need to understand. According to this ayah, Jesus is speaking from the cradle. He's a baby. He's an infant, right? Yeah. According to Islam, Jesus, when he was a baby, he was an infant. He could speak already. Why? Yeah. I don't know why. You know. Anyway, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> So he says as a baby, he's talking here as a baby, right? Peace on me, the yep. day I was born. Okay, fine, you're a baby. You are born as a baby, you're still a baby. And on the day that I die, so here, when he grows up, he will die. And on the day I am raised to life. So again, this actually confirms chapter 5 that we, <laughs> that we mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah. Chapter 5, I 117, this confirms... Co-confirms one the, the, this ayah uh, chapter nineteen thirty three and chapter five hundred and seventeen actually co-confirm each other confirm each other that Jesus is actually saying that he died on the cross. So here this is another disaster because here Jesus is speaking from his cradle as a baby saying peace on me the day I was born on the day I die as a as an adult. And on the day I'm raised to life. Now Muslims need to do all kind of mental gymnastic and say, no, 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 no. G this is uh, saying when Jesus will come back and then die. And you heard Abdul, right? You heard Abdul. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. said well, he's when he's coming. No, no, no. Jesus is here. You can play those games. Jesus is here, a baby. He's a baby talking from the cradle, and he's saying, "Peace the day on the, that I am born, the day I die, and the day I'm raised." Alive. So two times the Quran proved that Jesus died actually. Exactly, my friend. And we addressed this in many different live shows earlier. We have been addressing all these claims before. So it's a lie. Uh, I have course, a second question for you. Yes. It's more like on a logical standpoint. Uh, do you think like, um, you know, big Imams, Sheikh, since they know like so well about Islam, do you think that they actually know that it's stuff is fake and they're just pretending to get money or you think like they're so delusional the symbol that it is it is true no actually uh we know uh we have spoken to many uh shiuch. are you still with me my friend or did i lose you no no, no i'm still here I'm okay still here. We, have, we have actually spoken to many shiuch, uh before and we know man, m many of them are actually actually only muslim by name right they are only muslim by name so yeah. But we have also many guys. Please don't call me while I'm in the middle of a call. What's the point? I had to hang up of the guy who just called. So the shiuch, it's a big business. Look at Zekar Naik. He is a multi-millionaire. He's on yeah. the run. He went from uh, his original country. He's now somewhere in Malaysia, hiding. Right? Yes. Islam, Islam is a big business, my friend. You know. Yeah. They drive in the biggest cars. You know. Uh, it's it's a huge business. I mean, if you're going to lie, it, uh, if you're going sorry, if you're going to be honest, uh, you will lose face, you will lose your job, and you will lose your your wealth. So of course, you know, lies mm -hmm. is business. Lying is business in Islam. 
Yeah, you're right, you're right. So yeah, that was basically my question. Thanks for answering, my friend. Okay, my friend. Thank you for calling. Have a nice one. All right, see you. God bless you. Bye. Guys, um, you know, I appreciate that uh, our Christian brother here called me, but maybe he missed it. In the beginning of the teaching, I said, if there are Muslims, only Muslims can call us, you know? I let it go for now, guys. I will allow Christians to call me after we are done teaching, okay? If we have still time left. Uh, someone else is calling? Okay, let's see. Hello? Christians to call me after we are done Please mute YouTube, please mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube, please. Hello? Oh, wow. Hello? Please. Okay. Anyway, not sure what happened there. Guys, when you call me, mute you YouTube, okay? Mute YouTube when you call me. So actually, Jesus is confirming his death in two places. Chapter 19, Surat Maryam, 33. He is speaking here as a baby. Am I buffering again? Can you still hear me? Are you still with me, guys? Give me one if you're still with me, please. Not sure what's happening today. Satan doesn't like us to teach. Give me one if you're still with me. Okay. Refresh, guys. Refresh. Satan does not like us to teach today. Let me put it in text. Refresh. Brother. Brother. Refresh, brother. <laughs> yeah. You know. Everything is against us today, man. Satan does not like us to expose this man-made cult, man. Satan, what's wrong with you, man? Don't you like it? Anyway, so from chapter 19, ayah 33, we confirm the death of Jesus because he's talking as a baby and he's talking when he's going to be an adult and die on the cross. And this confirms actually the word fate in, he, in chapter 5, ayah 117. Jesus confirming his death on the cross. All right? Do you see how when Muhammad was fabricating ayahs, he actually spanked himself. And we showed you that chapter 4, ayah 157, this is actually addressing the Jews who are claiming, which is a lie, by the way, who are claiming that they killed the Messiah. Jews never made that claim, number one. And Jews never killed the Messiah. The Romans did this. So actually this is a nothing but a copy paste as we mentioned from the treaties of the great set. And we gave you the link. Copy paste. Let me give you the link again for the people who just joined in. Muhammad took it and put it in the Quran. Right? The treaties of the great set is an apocryphal writing written by agnostic in the 3rd century in Egypt. Not in Jerusalem. In Egypt. Much too late. Right? Copy paste. And Muhammad copied it and put it in the Quran. So actually, this not this not refutes that Jesus died on the cross. No, this refutes that the Jews are saying they killed him and crucified him. No, this does not actually refuse the death and, and resurrection of Jesus. No, no, this refutes that the Jews are saying they killed Jesus. This actually confirms that Jesus died at the hands of the Romans. Right? This confirms that Jesus died at the hand of the Romans. Because here the Jews are the ones talking. Right? They are the ones saying, surely we have killed the Messiah. But it were the Romans. Right? Where does it say, uh, where does it say cross? What does this word mean, my friend? Crucify. What does that mean? Why does it say cross? Why does it say are you are you a robot, my friend? Why are you spamming? What does crucify mean? Is it uh, putting someone uh, in a swimming pool? Maybe is this guy is it? Does it mean uh, someone is swimming here? Maybe jogging. Maybe maybe running. No, no. Crucify means some putting someone on the cross, and it was a Roman punishment and only a Roman punishment, right? Only and only a Roman punishment. Uh, Muhammad Qasim, let me go 
to a YouTube video and we're going to address that then if I have time I will call you back okay so Muhammad Qasim let me destroy one of your boyfriends and uh, as I mentioned in the live chat yesterday of our brother Christian Prince right we mentioned this on the live show of brother Christian Prince that today we're going to spank Farid i.e. Fifi Christian Prince call him, calls him Fifi since he made a video about Christian Prince, we're going to address that. And when I'm done, I'm going to call you. So you have to hold your horses, okay? So let me play this video clip from Farid, who is a coward, who will never call me. He will never call Christian Prince. He's a coward. He's only going to make response videos, you know, and we're going to spank him. Watch. Uh, okay. This is the video. Assalamu alaikum. By now, most of us are quite used to CP lying about Islam. It seems to be all that he talks about in his debates after all. But in this video, we find a rare glimpse of CP lying about Christianity. Really? He does this while inviting a Muslim to Christianity in order to accept the divinity of Jesus. Jesus is anti-selfishness. Exactly. Serve others so you can be served. When Jesus, he said to his followers, I want to wash your feet. They said to him, what are you talking about? Yes, Jesus came to serve, guys. Jesus didn't came to show, to show you his muscles. He came to serve, right? He came to serve mankind because that was the will of the Father in heaven. Jesus, as the eternal word of God, he, out of his love for his Father in heaven, because it's the will of the Father to save mankind, Jesus listened to the will of the Father because they share an infinite love. This, their love is so great. We have, you know, even our best love, we don't understand the love of God. This is how huge the love of God between the Father and the Son is. So it was the will of the Father for Jesus to come and serve. Je here CP is not lying. Let me continue. But you are our God. How you can wash our feet? They refuse. He said to them, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. Now, as we can see in the verses that speak of Jesus and the whole feet washing event, the disciples do not make that objection. They do not refer to him as their God. CP purposefully injects his ideology into the text in order to win a point for Christianity. So guys, you heard what, what this deceiver said, right? This Fifi, you know, a lot of people send me messages, please, for the love of God, respond to Fifi. My friend, have you been living on her stone? We have been doing many response videos because this guy is a coward. He attacked the apostate prophet. He keeps attacking Christian Prince, but he's too coward to even call Christian Prince. And you, you heard the, 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 what he was saying, right? You heard what he was saying. Let me, let me go a little bit back. To win a point for Christianity. Wait. Or to win a Do not refer to him as their God. So according to this Abdul, according to Fifi here, he's saying that the apostles did not refer Jesus to be their God. But let me, let me go back a little to show you, you know, he put this, you know, he was quoting John, the book of John, the gospel of John. He started reading from 13 to, and he actually did not even read it. He was only showing it at, on the screen. Do you see it? He's showing this on the screen and he stopped at 13.8. Uh, so 13, uh, gospel of John 13, chapter 13, verse 2 to 8. Guys. Did this guy even care to read what the, the Gospel of John is saying? No. Look what it says, guys. Why is this guy such a scumbag? Here's why. It says in John 13, 3, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand. What? Jesus, knowing that the Father, his Father in heaven, had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God. Wow! 
Why didn't Farid read this? First of all, is Allah, is Allah a father to mankind? No. Is Allah father to mankind? No. According to the Quran, did Allah give all things to Jesus? No. This is clearly showing <laughs> from the same chapter that actually everything that Father owns, the Father in heaven owns, the Son owns. God the Father owns you, He owns me, so does the Son, you see. But brother, the disciples didn't uh, call Jesus, thank God. My friend, the writer of this gospel, John himself, believed in this and he wrote about this and the proof is in front of you. He believed that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of the Most High. Now if we go to the Quran guys, to make it even more worse, and we'll continue from there. If we go to chapter 5, ayah 18, it says, The Jews and the Christians say, We are Allah's children and His beloved ones. Ask them, why then does He chastise you for your sins? So here clearly Allah is saying, I'm not your father. Right? He is not the father of the Jews. And he's clearly not the father of the Christians. Else, why is he chastising you? <laughs> Do you see, so here Allah, or the, let's say the writer of the Quran, Muhammad, who is fabricating ayahs, he clearly is showing everybody that Allah has no children. If you go to another uh, ayah from the Quran, chapter 19, Surah Maryam, ayah 88, it says, and they say, the beneficent hath taken unto himself a son. As surely you utter a disaster thing. So again, the Quran or the writer of the Quran is refuting the fact that Allah has any son. Clearly, this is a different God than the Islamic God, right? The Islamic God, Allah, is clearly not the same God of the Holy Bible because the Holy Bible, over and over, calling God father of mankind. So we are talking about two different gods, right? We are talking about two, two different gods. So why you Muslims dare to claim that Islam is an Abrahamic religion? Well, Abraham himself called God his father. So you Muslims cannot have a cake and eat it too. How dare you to insult our God by calling him Allah? How dare you Muslims? How dare you to call Allah the same God of the Holy Bible? How dare you? What a shame. In another hadith, uh, ayah, chapter 21, Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 26, it says, And they say, the beneficent has taken unto himself a son. Who? The Christians and the Jews. Be he glorified. Nay, nay, so no. But those whom they call sons are honored slaves. So you're nothing but a slave. What? You're nothing but a slave in Islam. But in Christianity, we are much more than servants or slaves. We are actually children of God. So the Quran over and over and over is showing you clearly that this is not the same God. God of the Quran is not the God of the Holy Bible. God of the Quran has no children. God of the Bible has many children. We are all child of God. We are all children of God. <clears throat> I know my voice is, is, go is gone actually, but that does not hold me back. Now let us go to the Bible guys, All right? Let us go to the Bible. Since this is talking about Simon Peter in the video, right? Simon Peter is the one who is saying to Jesus in the video that Fifi was playing, Fifi, Farid, i.e. Farid. Since it is Simon saying to Jesus, please don't wash my feet. We're going to see what Simon Peter, right? is saying, this is Matthew, this is the Gospel of Matthew, verse 16, it says, And Simon Peter answered, 
Because Jesus says, who do you think I am? But whom say ye that I am? Jesus is asking Simon Peter. And Simon Peter says, answering and said, thou art the Christ, the, the son of the living God. Bam! This actually condemns Islam. It condemns your prophet. It condemns Islam and clearly shows that Islam is not an Abrahamic religion. You have to deal with this Farid. Farid, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. Trying to attack Christian Prince, well, Christian Prince did not lie. Where did Christian Prince lie? Right? Simon Peter, that you are mentioning, Simon Peter, Simon Barjona, right, is calling Jesus the Son of the Living God. And Simon Peter actually died for his belief in Jesus as the son of the living God. Right? And if we go to John 5, verse 17, it says, But Jesus answered them, My father works until now, and I work. So Jesus claimed to have a father in heaven. He claims that God is his father in heaven. And he is still working. John 5, 18, then because of this, the Jews sought the more to kill him. Kill who? Jesus. They wanted to kill Jesus because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Brother, did John believe? Did John believe that you're quoting from Mr. Fifi? Did John believe that Jesus was equal with God? Yes. Because clearly, Jesus was making himself equal with God. And the Jews knew their God. The Jews knew. And why they wanted Jesus dead? Because Jesus was making himself equal with the Father. Now Muslims, Muslims, they are funny. You know, how many times have they asked us, show us in the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. How many times have you heard this question, guys? And I think Ahmadidat started, like let's say, 36 years ago with these kind of tactics. Show us where Jesus said, God worship me. How many times have you heard it, guys? Give me one if you have heard this question. Show us, Muslims quote unquote saying, show us where Jesus is God, where he says he's God worship me. Well, Jesus did not say it. Newsflash, Jesus did not say it. You know why Jesus did not say it, guys? To the people who are listening, to the people who are watching, why did Jesus not say, I'm God, worship me? Anyone? Why did Jesus not say, I'm God, worship me? Any idea? Give me your best shot, Christians. He doesn't need to. Why? Can you, do you have any idea why? Come on, Christians. Yeah, we're laughing at that question, but why? Why are we laughing at this question? Jesus have no need to say that, but why, cross pills, my friend? Why? Road FFM. You hit the jackpot, my friend. I hope you're the first one. Yeah, I think you're the first one who gave the right answer. Cause the Jews thinks he means is the father. Bam! Thank you. If guys, Please take out your pens and paper. Take out your pen and paper. Whenever a Muslim asks you and challenges you, show me where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. You need to address it by the following. To the Jews who lived in the first century, guys, in the time of Jesus, the Jews, if Jesus would have said, I am God, worship me, that means, that meant that Jesus saying, I am the Father, Worship me. Did you catch it? Again, if Jesus in the first century, right, said to the Jews, let me type it out. I am God. Worship me. That means he's claiming, then God forbid, Jesus is claiming, 
he is the father that's what they would have understood but since jesus is perfect jesus is the perfect communicator right because he's God in the flesh, he is the, the perfect communicator. He said, I am the son of God to make it clear. And his disciples, his followers believed that he is the son of the most high. Right? He said, my father. He didn't say, I'm the father. Because if he would have said, I'm God, worship me. The Jews would have understood that he is the father, claiming to be the father. This is how you can address that question. So whenever a Muslim says to you, challenges you show me where jesus says in the bible i'm god worship me say to him he never made that claim else jesus was not perfect he would have been a liar he would have been a deceiver like muhammad god forbid he is a perfect communicator he is the perfect communicator he is the son of the most high he is not the father imagine if you are a jew living among jews and Jesus would come and say, I am the God, worship me. That meant to me, Jesus saying, God forbid, I am the Father, worship me. That's not what Jesus wanted to, to say. Because he is not the Father, he is the Son. Bam! That's how you can deal with such a challenge. But Ahmed Idad, 36 years ago, when he started with, this, with these claims, he had no clue. No Christian at that time could handle such questions because they were not trained. So help me to help you take notes. If Jesus would have meant that, he would have said, I'm God, the Father worship me. Jesus, because he's the Son, he is not the Father, he is the Son, he is the second person of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he is the Son, he's not the Father, he would not made that claim. This is why he said, my father works until now, and I work. And the Jews immediately understood he is claiming, he is claiming that he is the son of the father. Now it makes perfect sense to them. But at the same time, when you're saying to the Jews, you are the son of the most high, that means you are making yourself equal with God. Do you see it? Bam. I hope you took notes, guys. Help me to help you take notes. All right? Yes. And um, Jesus said, I'm going to, you, to my God and your God. Who is my God? God the Father. His Father. Exactly. That proves my point. Brother. <laughs> this, yeah, this, I think you're a Muslim, right? And um, you, are, you are showing everybody what kind of ignorance you actually possess you clearly did not listen what i just said it makes perfect sense when jesus said right when he says when jesus said i am going to my god my father and your god your father it makes perfect sense but you have no clue you are speaking out of ignorance my friend you are not paying attention this is why Jesus never said to the Jews, I'm God worshiping, because they would have understood it as he is God the Father. God forbid, Jesus is the perfect communicator. He would have never, ever said that, right? Now to spank this boy, Farid, let me go back to chapter 13 of John, John 13, and so on and show you that this guy did not even start to read. He didn't even read, right? Here, as you see in front of you, Jesus, Jesus is all-knowing and he knew, and he knew he would be betrayed by Judas Iscariot. Jesus is all-knowing, he know what will happen to him, right? He knew that Judas Iscariot would betray him. Not only that, again from the same chapter in verse 3, it says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand. Do you see it? Everything that the Father owns, the Son owns, i.e. Jesus. And he is the Father. Now, Mr. Farid, Mr. Fifi, can you have a cake and eat it too? 
How dare you to quote biblical verses out of context and how dare you to even mention the gospel of John, right? Claiming that it's the same God of the Quran, but are not even reading that God of the Bible is father. But Allah of the Quran is not father to mankind. Can you have a cake and eat it too, Muslims? You Muslims always talk about context. Please go to the context. This is the context. Why are you not reading? Why are you only showing the verses on the screen? But why are you not reading them and explaining them to your deluded Muslim audience on your YouTube channel? Muslims like this always, you know? Remember the debate between uh, Muhammad Hijab and uh, <clears throat> David Wood? Muslims clapping in the audience. Muhammad Hijab says, Allah prays for, not to. They start to clap, 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 clap. Allah prays for, brother? Allah prays for, yeah. Allah prays. To who Allah prays when Allah prays? Allahu Alam. Maybe to a different God, maybe to himself, maybe to, to Jibreel, maybe to Muhammad, maybe to Jesus. Allah, Allah knows best. Right, Muslims? You see, whenever you, know, whenever you have Muslims, they don't listen. They only clap. Right? They don't care about the truth. And if we continue reading, right? And, G and Peter, the same Simon Peter, says, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thy the, the feet not, that has no part with me. So if you don't allow me to wash your feet, Jesus came to serve. Right? As we mentioned. Then it continues saying, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord! Right? Muslims will say, this does not automatically mean it's God, Lord does not mean, yes, it means God. Curious, right? Curious, Lord. Whenever you see this word, that means they are actually believed that he is God, right? As Thomas dropped on his feet, dropped on his knees and says, my Lord and my God. And they died for their belief in Jesus as being the son of God, right? Boy, Mr. Boy, sit down, okay? Let me give you a time out for spamming the chat. Admins, don't allow Muslims, please, to spam the chat like children. We are, right? This is not for children. This, this is only for the people who are actually looking for the truth. No need to spam the chat over and over. We already got the idea that you are a Mohammedan worshiper of Muhammad. Jesus said to him, hear that wash." Needed not to save to wash his feet, but is clean every width. And you are clean, but not all, right? And Jesus knew because he's all knowing. He knew that Judas will betray him. So Mr. Fifi, G <laughs> Christian Prince, our dear brother Christian Prince did not lie in any way, shape or form. And we showed you that actually Simon Peter himself that you talking about, he actually believes that Jesus is the son of the living God, right? When Jesus asked him, who am I to you? You, says Simon Peter, you are the son of the living God. And we showed you how Jesus claims to be the Lord of the Sabbath. And he claims to be the son of the most high. And this is why the Jews wanted him dead for making himself equal with God. Brother Fifi, brother, brother makes a good point, brother. So this live show, guys, is sponsored by Farid and Zakir Naik, as you see. Brother. Well, guys, I want to play for you <clears throat> a video. I want to play a video for you, and then uh, we're going maybe to accept some calls, okay? Let me play a video for you. Put on your headsets, guys. I'm going to play a video from Z Brother Zeker Naik. Brother? Brother Zeker Naik, brother? Yes, Brother Zeker Naik. 
Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Clap, clap, clap. You see? Clap, clap, clap. Without any idea. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Guys, when you hear this without any uh, subtitles, do you have any idea what this guy is saying? I hope you took your umbrellas out because your screen might be wet at this very point. All right? Again, what does he say? Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Clap, clap, clap. Without any idea what, what he's saying, Muslims are clapping. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Now this Abdul, this Abdul, as always, Muslims don't read. They don't read. I mean, if Rob Christian makes a claim, you need to see if Rob Christian is lying. Maybe I'm lying when I'm making a claim, right guys? This is the Gospel of John 5, verse 30, right? This is the very first, first uh, verse that he's quoting, right? Right guys? Do you see it? This is the Gospel of John. Let me go back. John, from the King James Version, John 5, 30. All right? This is Jesus speaking. Right, guys? Jesus says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Abdul, son of Abdul, brother, brother, why are you not continue reading? Why are you only quoting a part for your own agenda? Huh? He stopped here. Why, brother? Brother, why are you stopping here, brother? Because I want to deceive my audience, brother. This says Zachar Nike, right? I want to deceive my audience and get the money. You know, remember when the Christian brother called me, he said, why, why are these uh, shiuch doing it? It's for money, my friend. Why, if we do this to the Quran, guys, if Rob Christian, let's say, if Sam Shamoun, if Christian Prince read the Quran and only stops here, let's say, let's say this is Quran, God forbid, and we only stop here, is, is that fair, guys? Is that fair to the context? No. My friend, do you believe that Jesus has a father? Do you believe that Allah is a father? Since you claim that God of the Quran is the same God of the Holy Bible. Do you believe that God of the Quran is father? And do you believe that he's, this, the, <laughs> he's the father of Jesus? No. So, you know, you see, you see the taqiyya, you see the deception, you see the agenda of the Muslim apologists. Yeah. You see? You see why? Imagine if you would have continued reading the Father. What do you think? Do you think the audience would have still clapped? Yes. Because, you know, they, don't, they are not listening. They are only clapping. <laughs> right? And yes, it is the will of the Father to send Jesus to save us. It was the will of the Father for mankind to be saved through Jesus, to, through the blood, the holy blood of Jesus, the sinless blood of Jesus. And because out of the love for the Father, because it's the will of the Father, Jesus listens to the will of the Father because he has infinite love and they are in perfect harmony with one another. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, if it's the will of the Father, the Son will listen. And because it's the will of the Father of Jesus, Right? He came to serve. Do you see it? Did Christian Prince lie? No. Fifi, you are a scumbag like your hero, Zachar Nike. You are not telling us anything new and Christian Prince clearly did not lie. You are liars. You don't read the text. If you have no shame, you have no dignity. You Muslims truly have no shame no dignity. Imagine if we had done this to your Quran. Read only a part and stop. Why are you such scumbags, man? Shame on you. Now, what did Jesus actually mean, guys? Did Jesus, point A, said, I am helpless human being, a simple prophet of Allah? Did he mean that? Or did Jesus say when he said, 
when I claimed to be the divine son of God, you Jewish leader thought I was claiming to be a separate God who acts on his own, but I am here to correct you. Even though I have the same nature and attributes that the father has, and even though I'm the final judge of all people and the one who raises the dead, I do not on my own. I do not act on my own, that says Jesus. I connect, cannot act on my own. I can do nothing on my own because I am not a separate God. I am one with the Father. That's what Jesus was saying here. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are not separate they are together one God, three persons as one, not as three, right? This is why Jesus said, I, I on myself can do nothing because he must be in perfect harmony, in perfect communication with the Father. It's the will of the Father, the Son listens, right? Of course, the Son cannot do anything without the Father. The Father cannot do anything without the Son. The Holy Spirit cannot do anything without the Son. The Holy Spirit cannot do anything without the Father because they are in perfect harmony. Unity, perfect unity. This is why you say the Trinitarian God as one. Glory to his name, God of the Holy Bible. Do you understand, guys? This is why Jesus never said, I am God, worship me to the Jews. Else they would have understand it as he is the Father and worship him. Jesus did not make that claim. Right? Jesus did not make that claim because he's not the Father, he's the Son. And since he's the perfect communicator, he would have never made that claim. Jews needed to un understand that he is the Son of the Most High. And this is why the disciples understood that Jesus, right? Jesus is the son of the living God. Simon Peter saying it, he, you are the son of the living God. He didn't say you are the father. No, 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 no. Because he, they clearly understood what Jesus was saying here, right? Brother, why are you not reading? Brother Fifi, brother Zachary, read, read, brother. Don't be a coward, brother. I know you're a coward. You will never ever dare to call us, Fifi. I know. Because you're going to get spanked left and right. That's why, right, brother? So point B is the correct one. Not what the Muslims want you to think it's, it's the correct one. No. Jesus didn't say, I'm a helpless human being. He said, I'm the son of the Most High. He is the final judge. He Everything that the Father owns, the Son owns. All right? Jesus is the perfect communicator, right? He is the, the perfect communicator. This is why he would never, ever, ever say, I'm God, worship me, else that meant to the Jews, he is the Father in heaven. Jesus is not Muhammad. Muhammad kept spanking himself, kept contradicting himself, but because he's a fake prophet and Jesus is not he is perfect is in communication. He said, I'm the son of the most high. Let me see if I <clears throat> can call someone back. I received a call. Guys, let me get some water. My throat is itching. My water is gone. Give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. Happy New Year! Who is? Are you uh, Ultimate Shirk? You know what? 
go get lost. I have no time for uh, fake Muslims. All right, let me block this guy. Guys, this guy, you know. Oh. What's happening? This guy, I have no time to waste with him. He's a kid. He's a fake Muslim. Let me call Muhammad Qasim. Muhammad Qasim, we have debated before on Discord. Let me call him back. Muhammad Qasim, pick up the phone. Yalla ya Muhammad Qasim, yalla yalla, irfa. Okay, I think he's uh, not available. I'll call you, I'll call you another time maybe and discuss about Jesus dying or not. Okay, call me another time, no problem. Yes, he's a fake Muslim, guys, because he um, would have been, if he, if he went to Mecca, guys, if this ultimate truth guy who is a guy from Senegal if he would have gone to Mecca on Hajj let's say and they found out that he is a follower of Rashad Khalifa they would pick him up and sh lynch him stabbing him on the streets of Mecca for being a follower of Rashad Khalifa uh, for the people who do not know ultimate shirk the guy who just called me and I hang up on him we have been talking to him many times over he is a really nasty individual. He is a fake Muslim. He is a follower of Rashad Khalifa who claimed to be the last messenger after Muhammad. <laughs> he, he is a follower of Rashad Khalifa who claims that he, the Quran is talking about him. <laughs> right? And he claims that parts of the Quran are even corrupted. And this Rashad Khalifa in the 90s was stabbed to death by Sunni Muslims. Right. So it's a waste of time to talk to the same guy over and over, right? Yeah. Al Alicia, I don't understand what you're saying. Sorry, I don't, I'm not following you. I have no clue what you're saying. Islam, Islamic State of Indonesia you already brainwashed many people here. May Allah forgive you. Islamic State of Indonesia. If you call yourself a man, you call yourself a man, right here, right now, call me. We are live. My Skype is open. My Skype is Dear Rob Christian. Call me and let's see who is the one who is deceiver, who is the macker, you or me. Is that fair? <clears throat> is that fair, guys? Call me, Mr. Ustaz. I think you're an Ustaz from Indonesia, right? Call me. Don't be a coward. Right? Don't be a coward. Call me and let's see. Let's see who is the deceiver. You or me? Let's see who is deceiving people. You or me? Is that good? Call me. My Skype is open or send me a message and I will call you back. Uh, Vanessa tried to call me. Let, he, let me call her back. Vanessa, I'm calling you. Please pick up. Hmm. Call failed? Hmm. You called me a couple of times during the talk. <clears throat> Send me a message if you're ready for uh, for a discussion, sister. Let me try again. Mm. Again, failed. Okay. I have no clue why she's not picking up. <clears throat> Any Muslim? Any Ustaz? Any Ustaz? Any Ustaz from Indonesia? 
who claims to be a man. And we don't want kids. We, we want real men, real women. Right? This is not for kids. Our live shows are not for kids. We are only here to have respectful, honorable discussions. You don't lie. I don't lie. We provide evidence and we provide everything on the screen. If you dare to call me a liar, call me. If you dare to call me a deceiver, call me. Don't be a coward like your boyfriends, your heroes, like Ali Dawa, like Mimi Hijab, like Fifi, Mr. Farid that we spanked today. And how many times did we spank Fifi? Over and over and over and over. Just go to my YouTube, guys. Just go to my YouTube channel and you will see how many times we already spanked Fifi. This is not the first time, right? Here you see my live show. Look, just go to my YouTube channel and you will see how many times I already spanked him. Here is Farid. Here again Farid. So you Christians, please go watch those videos and see how we easily we can refute these liars and deceivers. Right? My, my YouTube is full of it. He is another boyfriend of his. I mean, they are all boyfriends of Mimi Hijab. Look how many times I already spanked Muhammad Hijab. Over. Over. Shamsi, Shushu. And by the way, when Christian Prince calls Shamsi Shushu, he got it from me. I invented the name Shushu, okay? <clears throat> so don't dare to say you're a Christian, you're copying Christian Prince. Now Christian Prince is copying me. I'm the one who invented that name. <laughs> I was the first guy who calls Shamsi Shushu, okay? See? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Enigma. God bless you. Thank you for your support. <clears throat> Qasim is calling me? Okay, let me call him back. Pick up uh, Muhammad Qasim. Yalla, ya Muhammad Qasim. No games, man. Hello. Hello, Muhammad Qasim. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, we have spoken many times on Discord, right? We debated a couple of times. Yeah, we have, yeah. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Why did you call me, my friend? You are live on air? Go ahead. Yeah, so just give me two minutes and I'll, I'll debunk your... You said that Jesus is um, dead according to the Quran, so he died. Yes. So exactly. yeah, I'll debunk that. Yeah, I'll debunk that completely. Okay. So go if ahead. you look... If you, yeah, just give me two minutes. So if you look at... Before, Surah, before you go there, before you go there, do you know Arabic? Do you speak Arabic? I understand the, the words of the Arabic. I've studied the uh, one year. For, for the you, you, you studied one year, so you, you speak Arabic. I my study was mainly on um, walk up learning the walk up. So learning. you don't you don't know the language, okay? He, guys, he doesn't speak Arabic. In other words, go ahead. Yeah, I don't speak. It. I still know the word. Yeah, I can translate. No, no, words. no. Okay, you don't you don't know the language. You are studying and only for a year, my friend. I'm born in the Middle East. I am an Arab. I am. <laughs> my mother tongue is Arabic, right? So, yeah, but go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, in Surah 4, verse 157, it says, it says clearly, it says, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Your claim was, he died. Chapter 4, cross. chapter 4, 157, right? This one. Yeah, yeah. Do you see the so screen? Clearly, Do you see the screen? Um, no, I, I, have, I have the verse. Uh, okay, um, okay. On my... Okay, can you read it, my friend? Can you read it? The Arabic? Yeah. Yeah, no, English. Read English, no problem. Yeah, it says indeed we. Uh, um, it says and they're saying indeed we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. So the, my main point is here is that your claim was that he died on the cross. Here the Quran is saying that they they certainly did not kill him. Yeah. Um, so let's let's continue from there, and then no, it no, says no 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 baby steps baby I'm, steps baby yeah, steps okay. Let us dissect, you... no, no, baby steps, my friend, since we are fair people, we are not like uh, Farid, you know, who never read the Bible in their life. We are not like uh, many Muslims, when they go to the Bible, they actually do not read, 
But we, we Christians, when we go to the Quran, we read it as it is. So let us take baby steps and start from above. And they're saying, who are those people? Please say, tell me, who uh, are those people? These are the probably the enemies who are uh, of uh, Jews. Who are, who are those? Who are those? These are Jews, I'm assuming, or Jews or the Romans or whoever they are. No, who are those people? I want a clear answer. Who are the ones who are saying? What's the relevance? Who? What's the relevance? <laughs> we are talking about the Quran. What are you talking about? Of yeah, course, I mean, there's I a relevance. This is not. This is not a comic or... book, my, my friend. This is not a comic book. We are not talking about DC Comics or Marvel. We are talking about the Quran. Everything is important here for you. You're a Muslim. This is the number one book for you. What's no, I'm saying to, in regards to our argument, I'm saying what's are the you, relevance? Are you saying that the Quran is not Who, relevant? Saying this? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying to our argument. It's very important the ones, it's very, very important who the ones are who are speaking. So who are they? Are those, uh, are those enemies? Sure. Are those? might be the Romans, okay, I'm not sure. You know what? Go make sure, go make sure who they are and then come back. Okay? I don't have time for wannabe Muslims who don't even know their Quran. I'm going to refute you, Rob, but I don't know, brother, who the Quran is talking about, brother. Go, don't waste my time. Don't investigate the Quran on my live show. Go read your Quran, study your Quran. Don't come back and try to refute me. I have no time for kids. Okay? Not sure, brother. Brother, I have no clue, brother, but I'm going to refute you, brother. See? Please don't send me kids. I told you many times. Send me the stars. Send me the so-called hadith experts like Fifi. Send me Ustaz, send me Imam, don't send me kids. Brother, brother, I have no clue who is talking here, but I'm going to refute you, brother. You see, guys, when we go to the Quran, we read it as it is. We want to know who these people are. Don't waste my time. It's not irrelevant, brother. Okay, that means your Quran is not relevant, brother. Don't waste my time, man. Guys, um, let's see if we have another color. Hamadin <clears throat> uh, Hamas, you called me during my conversation with Muhammad Qasim. Let me call you back. Pick up the phone, my friend. Hmm. Okay. No answer. Let me try once more. Yeah, hello. Your life on our my friend. Welcome. You calling your daddy, bro? This ultimate get lost. You see? This guy is so desperate, man. Ultimate shirk, brother. It's me, your daddy, brother. You're a fake Muslim, brother. Why are you follower of Rashad Khalifa, brother? You're going to get stabbed by the Muslims if you go to Mecca or Medina, brother. For being a follower of Rashad Khalifa, brother. Oh, a lot of mercy. Adamu Bakari. He called me too. Okay. He says in the text, he sent me a message through Skype. Keep deceiving yourself. This is the guy who always steals the Wi-Fi of his neighbors. He is stalking me on Facebook. Let's see, he's going to pick up. I'm going to give him a chance. Brother, pick up, brother. Keep deceiving yourself, Rob Christian, but I'm not going to pick up the phone, brother. Why, brother? Unavailable, okay. I think that's the Nigerian guy, right? Who always steals the Wi-Fi of his neighbors. <clears throat> um, Lula, I, I really can't uh, do the Zachary Nike voice, man. Uh, don't ask me that. It's going to be really horrible. Brother, Fitha. 
you know, you know, I can't do it, guys. Sorry. Uh, no one can do it like Christian Prince. So if you want to listen to that stuff, go to Christian Prince. <laughs> guys, didn't we told you, didn't we say to you that we are going to spank Farid yesterday? And we did. You see how easy it is to spank these heroes? This guy can only do response videos and lie to his Muslim audience on his YouTube channel. But he does not dare to call me. He, he will get spanked anyway when we are going to, you know. Why did I actually do the response video? Because I saw a Zachary Naik video and I saw that hey, this is a good chance to spank him, uh, you know. Spank two uh, Abduls with one stone. So, you yeah, know, it was a good chance to spank them. And then he did. Guys, I saw a video that I really wanted to share with you. Since we don't have uh, any calls anymore, let me try to call this person back. I'm not sure if he's a Christian. I think it's a Christian. Vanessa, you're a Christian, right? Let me call you, please. You know, I want to listen to what you have to say since you called me. Hmm. Okay. Not available. That's bad. Is there any Christian who wants to call us before we uh, play a video, guys? Is there any Christian who wants to call us before we play a video from Zachary Nike? If you're a Christian, you can call me. Maybe she's sleeping. Oh, I see. Okay. I think she's a Christian because I see in her... I can do all thing, things through Christ. So I think she's a Christian. Yeah, she's a Christian lady. Maybe from Asia. I know it's late maybe now in Asia, parts of Asia. <clears throat> Amen to that, Irene. Jesus is alive. He has risen. He is risen indeed. Amen and glory to his name. Is there any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge? Is there any Muslim who doesn't want to be a text terrorist? Call me. We are live on Skype. Send me a message. Call me. I will call you back. Oh, she called me back. Okay, let me try again. I'm not sure why I'm, the call is not going through. Hmm. Okay. Now it's working. Hello? Hello, Rob. Hey, Vanessa. How are you, sister? I'm good. I'm finally, good. finally. The, the call is Thank good. You. Yeah. I was driving. I was driving, and I'm not allowed to pick up the phone while driving. You are not copying uh, Abbas, right? The guy who always drives on uh, Suki's <laughs> live show, right? <laughs> nah. you, know, you know, Rob, I come from a country yeah. where um, the the Middle Eastern Islamists, yeah. they like taking, you know, the country I come from, people like want to go everywhere. Yeah. You know, they want to have a chance. Yes. So they count Middle East as actually one of the countries that they can go to, it's better. Yeah. So what, what the Islamists do is they take them and uh, like coach them for how long, I don't know. Yeah. And by the time they come back, they are very active in like gaining, uh, getting people converted to Islam. Yeah, I see. Which, which uh, eventually I found out that they are being paid, whether from Saudi Arabia or from uh, Ku Kuwait or wherever, whichever country they had been taken to, yeah. come back and they are receiving, they are now receiving payment. With money, yeah, payment. it's all about the money, right? It's all about so, the money. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what I think about Farid, who is in London. Yeah. Farid seems to be someone who is receiving money, not even only Farid, um, the other guy, the other very... Uh, Mimi Hijab, uh, Ali Dawa, all of them, yeah. Oprah, yeah. yeah. I think they get some funding from somewhere. Yeah. So they are now very terrified yeah. that um, they are losing. They are losing uh, Islamists. They are losing Muslims. Yes. So they have to do everything. Practice more than Takia yeah. to like make their converts stay otherwise there won't be funding for them anymore exactly, exactly. And, I've been, and i've been wondering where how how rich is saudi arabia how rich are these countries that they can do this all over the world 
Well, if you see what is going on in Mauritania, where uh, more than half of the population there are uh, prostitutes, maybe they are gaining money from there. Who knows? Yeah. Anyways, but that's not why I called you. Mm. Actually, I was while while driving, I was listening to Christian P Prince. I'm addicted to both of you now. No, and thank you. God bless you. Sister. I appreciate it. God bless you too. While I was listening, one Muslim guy came uh, called in and um, was talking about Isaiah chapter seven verse twenty. Yes. And I I happen to know Isaiah yeah. chapter seven, and I was and he said he was reading according to. A new international version yeah. and it distorted that verse you won't believe it i'm, I'm not sure whether you well you, we, we we believe it because we just played a video from zakir naik how they only read a part out of context you know and when we talk about the quran they always scream for context but what they do they go to the bible they read only a small part without any context and say hey look jesus said i'm not god <laughs> yes that's yeah, you know, do, you, yeah. Know, That's their you know, you know the, the the mistake um, Christian Prince made. I I, I wasn't uh, live with them. I was just listening to it uh, yeah. today. The mistake he did was he didn't go to the Bible passage immediately to yeah. to bust the guy, yeah. because he said he said something really terrible that really cranked me up. He said, um, "God, uh, that is written there that uh, Yah Yahweh." He said Yahweh. Um, uh, is like uh, shaving the private part, oh, and I'm like, that is not in the Bible. Of course not. And then I, looked, mm. and I looked it up to be to make sure, wow. and he actually he actually lied to Christian Prince, yeah. and I was wondering why would he lie to Christian Prince? Maybe there were many people listening from the Mohammedans yeah. that would believe it without going to check. No, of course so they are not going. Muslims are actually told by their imams, by ustas, by the shaykh, don't read the Bible. Don't read it. It's a satanic book. Don't read it. So do you really think that they're going to go to the Bible and read? No. They go to ahmadida.com. They go to sakernaik.com. They're going to answeringchristianity.com. And they think they are reading the Bible. My friend, imagine if I do that to the Quran. Imagine if I go to uh, Christianity. Uh, dash Quran.com. Is that fair? Or do we go actually to the Quran itself as you see in front of you? Of course not. But we Christians are not like the Muslims. They are doing this. They are deceiving the audience because they have yeah. an agenda. They want to keep Muslims uh, deluded. They want to keep them brain dead because Islam is actually a sickness. It's a cult. It's a disease to kill brain cells. And that's what yeah. Islam has been always. And the Quran itself says, don't ask questions. So, it is yes. what it is. No, you know, you know, there was this uh, uh, lady who came out of Islam. Yeah. Uh, no, a man, sorry, came out of Islam and said that he was warned from childhood that if you touch the Bible, you will be bewitched. Yeah. Do you see? Do you see, guys? This is actually so, what they, they... I'm from the Middle East and I've seen many... Uh, believe me, I've seen many Imams saying to their Muslim audience. Don't read the Bible. Don't buy a Bible and put it in your house because there were, might always be a chance that when you read the Bible, you you yeah. go, according to them, you're right? Uh, since they claim that it's uh, corrupted without any evidence, without any shame, they say it's corrupted. Well, the Quran says it's, you know, it's sent by, down by Allah and the word of Allah cannot be corrupted. But, you know, it's these are Muslims. They have an agenda and they advise their Muslim audience, don't do it because one day maybe you'll read the Bible and you'll leave Islam. You're going to go out of Islam yes. and be a Christian. Yes. So, of course. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's why I called you because I then saw you live. Yeah. You know, I get all these recommendations, you know, yeah. because I'm, I'm, I subscribe to you guys. And then I got the recommendation that you were live. So I thought, oh, this is a good idea. I could give you a call yeah. that you talk about that passage because there in the in uh, especially are you, I, I have the feeling that muslims love isaiah <laughs> there, is, there is there is one guy that always uh like want uh, to write something about isaiah and i always bust him yeah now but I the thing is isaiah isaiah himself condemns muhammad to hellfire destroys exactly. allah because if you go to isaiah 9 6 it says that a son a child will be born the government will be on his shoulders and he's the he's he's the mighty god so how yes. dare you to go to Isaiah? Isaiah 
puts Muhammad, you know, in hellfire. It condemns Muhammad exactly. to hellfire. Don't ever go exactly. to Isaiah as a Muslim. Exactly, exactly. So I want you, just uh, through via your uh, forum, I want to make them see if the Mohammedans are listening to you, mm -hmm. that God uh, uses flowery languages. Mm -hmm. In this case, in Isaiah chapter 7, mm -hmm. God is like condemning the, uh, uh, the, the Syrians yeah. and the Israelites that came together. They joined forces against Judah. Yeah. Now, God said he will hire it will hire nations, yes. nations that uh, 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 Syria itself will gather together against Israel for what they did. Yeah, yeah and, and, and God, yeah, and God, that. yeah, God actually punished the Jews over and over, right? Uh, uh, yes, and, and he always said, he yes. always, God always said, the nations, yes, these exactly. very brutal nations, I'm, they are, they are like rod in my hands. Exactly. If you go after their gods. So they, I don't know where their brains are. Do they really understand or yeah. they just want? I don't get it. No, no, they, they only, you know, what their shiuk are doing is they, they create a website. They put only a small part out of context. They don't read the entire chapter, uh, let alone the couple of verses before or a couple of verses after to understand what actually the Bible is saying. They quote it out of context. They have no clue what they are reading. They, because they're only reading a small part. And when you're going to do that, you're going not to be fair to the text. But we don't do that to the Quran. We read it as it is. But Muslims are cowards. They are deluded. They are deceived by their leaders. And that is why they are doing this to our Holy Bible. Exactly. Yes, uh, sister, uh, I advise you, by the way, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Right? I do. The, yeah, I do. On, That's uh, why I know you Click on the online. notification uh, bell to always, guys, make sure to... Click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. It's very important, yeah. right? So, Rob, brother, please, anytime a, a Mohammedan calls you and tells you about a Bible passage, don't yeah. let them continue. No, no, no. Go no. there yourself. Exactly. Look I always do that. I always yourself. do that. This is why because we always show that. Right? Exactly, sister. Yes. Thank you for the advice. But Thank if you. You, the people who know me, I always go back to, to the verses. I always yes. do that, right? They can't, yes. they can't play that taqiyah game with me. <laughs> it's not working on me. Yes. Very simple verse. He doesn't even have to read up or down. Yeah. It was simple. Yeah. I will get I, I, the Assyrians, yeah. hire them. Yeah. I will hire the Assyrians and the people surrounding them to come and punish you for what you did. Yeah. Exactly. And he was saying, he just turned this into something else that God was going to uh, uh, shave the private parts. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you know, you see the personal agenda right there. Exactly. Thank you for calling. God bless you. Thank you, brother. God, God bless, bless your you family. Too. And uh, maybe Thank we'll you. speak to each other in the future again. God bless you. Thank you Thank for calling. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Yeah, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sister. Bye. Yeah, you see, you see, guys, how important it is to always go back to the verses. Always go back to the scripture. Because you cannot take words of Muslims for granted. Make sure to go, even if it's about the Quran, even if it's about the Hadith, always make sure to first look it up and see if they are quoting something out of context, if they are using taqiyya. Don't ever trust any word from a Muslim. Make sure to go and look the verse up. Go look the Quranic ayah up. Go look the Sahih Hadith or any Hadith update they are quoting. Don't be like them, right? You, we have shown you the video from Ahmad Didad, sorry, from Zakir Naik, where he is quoting only a part of a verse. Be smarter, guys. And this lady is, is actually very smart. You heard it, right? Don't fall for the traps, right, guys? Don't fall for the tactics. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who dares to call me? My Skype is open. My Skype ID is DROP Christian. Last call, guys, because you know we are almost three hours live. Don't hang up on me, brother. Don't hang on me, brother. Call me and let's see what will happen. Brother. Brother. Call me, brother. I wanted to play a video, but maybe I will save it for another time. It's a long video. We'll keep it for another time, I think. Any Muslim? 
Uh, Phoebe, yeah, you need to rewatch the today's live show. I think we done a lot of damage again today. We responded to Farid, we spanked Zakir Naik. So yeah, you really missed out a lot. So you need to replay the live show. It normally takes, like say, uh, maybe between 45 minutes, an hour to, the, to see the live chat again, right? The live chat will appear again if you wait because YouTube needs time to process the live show, the video, right? So you can always go back to the live chat. You can see the live chat uh, and our dear admins always provide uh, the links, the, the, the scripture, uh, the reference in the comment section. All right. If you are looking up for the links to the reference, our admins put them always in the comment section. All right. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have a Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge? Last call, guys. Come on. Brother, don't hang on me, brother. Don't be a coward, brother. Rob Christian, you're finished, brother. <clears throat> Come on, man. Don't be a coward, man. Don't use excuses, man. We are live. Now you have the opportunity to silence us. Silence me. Brother makes a good point, brother. <clears throat> Habibi, Hayati. Kifak. Salam al Masih. Alhamdulillah, Salam. Guys, do we have any Muslim? Come on. Call me, call me, uh, Muslims. Yalla. Where are the Ikhwan? Where are the Muslim brothers? Brother, why are you not calling, brother? I'm a good singer. No, Lula. Lula, I'm using a filter, so that's why my voice comes out very beautiful. My real voice, it will break all the mirrors at your house. So, so you know, my voice is not beautiful, man. You know how many times I broke mirrors and glass in house because of my beautiful voice here in house? You don't want to hear my voice under the shower, man. You know, it's not cheap, man. I have to always replace my mirrors and glasses and everything here. Brother. Rob, answer me if you dare. I will answer you if you call me, brother. We said time. What time, brother? We are live now, brother. Why, why are you not calling me, brother? What time are you talking about? Finally, you have the chance to call me. What time, set time? You are here. You've been on my live show for at least 30 minutes. I've seen your name going through the live chat. And you want to set a time? <laughs> Lord of mercy. Do you have any more excuses, brother? Man. You Muslims are truly bankrupt, man. You must be so bankrupt to look for excuses to not call us. Let your ustas call me, man. You're from Indonesia. Let your ustas call me. Where is, why is your ustas hiding, brother? Let's have a live debate. Well, we are live. Call me. Come to Indonesia with David Wood, Al Fadi, Christian Prince, and others. Debate me and my teachers will have a respectful way. Why? Why can't we do it right now? Are you going to? Uh, pay for my uh, plane ticket? You want to date me or you want to debate me, brother? You want me to come all the way to Indonesia? More than 20 hours uh, flight? Why? Who are you, man? <laughs> come to Indonesia, brother. 
Do you want me to learn Indonesian first too? Maybe I need to learn Indonesian and then we can debate, right? <laughs> brother, I, I'm so scared to debate you, brother. But, you know, I challenge you for a debate to come to Indonesia, brother. Aha! Uh -huh. Brother. Guys, I think we'll wrap this up. I think we have had a wonderful live show. Thanks to the Lord. God has been good. Guys, like always, don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. Destroy it like it's possessed by jinn like Muhammad. Also, don't forget to click on the notification bell to receive notifications. Thank you for everything, guys. Thank you for your support. Without you, we cannot do this, guys. Today, we showed you how the Muslim tactics work. We showed you that actually Jesus himself confirms his death in the Quran. We showed you that the Quran itself does not reject the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross. Right? The Romans killed Jesus, not the Jews. So the Quran actually in chapter 4, ayah 157, does not deny that the Romans actually put Jesus on the cross, but it denies that the Jews did that. Yes, the Jews wanted Jesus dead, but they did not kill him. The Romans killed him because only the Romans and only the Romans had the authority. It was their way of punishing criminals, let's say, on the cross. The Jews only stoned people to death for blasphemy. So the Quran does actually not say that Jesus died and resurrected. No, no. The Quran does not reject that. It actually rejects the claim by the Muslims. Uh, sorry, by the Jews. Right? Run, Rob Christian, run. Brother, you had your chance, brother. You didn't call me, brother. Now I'm running, brother. Do you have more excuses, brother? We already for almost three hours straight live. And now you're saying you're running, brother? <laughs> you're out You're out of business, brother. You're bankrupt like your prophet. You're bankrupt like your shiuch, your ustaz, who are always hiding from us. We have been live for almost three hours and no imam, no sheikh called me. They only sent me kids who have no clue about Islam. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. Islam is bankrupt. The shiuch, the ustaz, the imams, people like Zakarnaik are bankrupt. Farid is bankrupt, like his boyfriends, Ali Dawa, Mimi Hijab, who hanged up on Christian Prince, muted Christian Prince do, during a so-called official live debate. Right? Because when you are a follower of a bankrupt man-made sex cult, Muhammad Aisha said, I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your sexual desires, Muhammad. Aha, said Aisha. She knew Muhammad was a scam. Shukran Rana. God bless you guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Your knees too, Muslims. Please drop Muhammad. Stay away from Islam. Denounce Muhammad. Denounce Islam. And come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Lord willing, we will see each other again in a future live show like today. God bless you, Jesus Lord, and Muhammad is a scam and Islam is false. God bless.